All right, all right, all right, fire them up! What's going on, everybody, and welcome, welcome to the Genre of Your Life podcast, a show all about movies, TV, and the genres that define us, and a podcast where a that will have a positive review of Joker Fale Adieu, if not probably the, on, the only podcast will have a probably good review of this movie, <laughs> sadly enough. Uh, I am one of your hosts, uh, Doug Jones, with me as always, is... My amazing co-host, one of the best people in the world, one of my best friends, it is the amazing, the incredible, the wonderful, it is Mr. Nick Johnson. How's it going, Nick? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right, man. Hey, man, happy 60 episodes, man. This is our 60th episode of the podcast. Can happy you believe it? 60 episodes. Wow. 60 episodes, man, from Expendables 4 to Night Swim <laughs> to Indiana Jones and Dial of Destiny. The classics. To- uh, the icons <laughs> to, to, to everything to hunger <laughs> games my friend we have made it to the 60s in terms of podcast man we made it we made it we made it my guy and i want to thank everyone it's a really huge announcement for for both me and nick obviously um this is something that i think we've been talking about for a while now which is hard to believe and it's not no we not we have not got on to the allied global marketing press list yet i wish um but even <laughs> even even better if you ask me and that is um thanks to i mean we're going it'll be two years come next month that we've done the show which is hard to believe which is quick, how quick two years how much has changed for better or for good in the past two years but uh it is we are very excited to announce that um me and Nick have been accepted. Sorry, Nick and I have been accepted as uh, official journalists and podcasters for South by Southwest Festival in Austin. So, Nick, my friend, we're doing it, baby. We're doing it. Yeah, oh, yeah. We're doing it, man. We're doing it. Um, you know, I'm gonna ask you, man. How does it feel, man? How does it feel, to kind of like our first like official festival as podcasters? It feels really surreal. You know, it's kind of like. It's like you're waking up, living the dream, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, I never really thought that I would kind of, like, make it this far. Um, and it's just like, wow, as a, as a journalist podcaster, like, that's, that's like, really cool. And it's, it's really exciting to to go in for that, like, purpose now. And it's just, it's surreal. And it's, it's really exciting. And I'm, I'm, I'm really grateful to have made it this far. I'm grateful to, to all of the fans and audience that, that, that got us this far. Thank all of you guys. We really, really appreciate it, and like, we wouldn't have come this far without you guys. So, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh no, you know, I'm, yeah. just, I'm just grateful and just like super, super happy about it. Oh, dude, apps, no, nah, man, you said it perfectly, man. I mean, I tell you guys, if you're lucky enough to have a a brother or a best friend like Nick Johnson, you win the lottery, if you ask me. And again, this is also credit to Joe and to Moses as well, but. To my Nick, this man will show up no matter what, no matter what screening it is, no matter what event it is, what episode it is, this man will show up. So if you're ever lucky to have a friend like Nick Johnson, truly, you've won the lottery. And I mean that, bro, from the bottom of my heart. Um, this, I too kind, bro. Thank you. No, nah, man, this would not have been possible that, you know, two years ago when we were doing our show on Discord and our audio was all over the place and we were kind of just figuring oh, yeah. things out, which was, you know, we were on YouTube for a while first and then we, we finally get to, we, we probably moved to like Spotify and Apple, all this stuff. And then of course, um, our amazing friends at Movies More Fun and Frost Communications and our lovely Lee um, and Allison, of course, they believed in us too, which can't, I mean, which is, was a huge part, a huge deal to us um, as, a, as a growing podcast. And we're still growing, obviously. We're still very kind of like, we're two years in, we're still, we're still rooks. We're like year two Batman in the Batman movie. You know, we're still, you know, we're still like kind of like see, we're still kind of seeing what, what what a show is, and we're kind of expanding our horizons as a podcast. And now that yeah, thing- like we we, we kind of established where we still we still moving forward, we still building our way. Absolutely, man. We're still we're still we're still a growing show, and I think that's a testament to you and I, to Moses, to Joe, but also you know to the show itself and to our lovely audience, man. This obviously, I mean, this obviously wouldn't have happened without you guys. So thank you yes, for the indeed. support and just the love, and, and just the kind of like listening and telling telling your friends about us and you know fellow movie fans about us, and podcast fans about us. But to get that email the other day, and especially the, the year that I'll be honest, as everyone knows, this year has not been my year at all. Um, but 
just he, seeing that email about from South by Southwest and just getting that recognition um, that to Nick and myself, that just uh, it means the world to us. And it's something that we've been talking about for now a couple months now with this. And obviously, we're still working on a few other events, hopefully down the road for next year. Um, but right now, it looks like we the podcast, Under Your Life, is Austin bound, hopefully in the uh, beginning of March. So, my friend, man, cheers to us, my boy. Cheers to us. Cheers to us, indeed. Cheers to us. So, if all goes well, look out for a lot of fucking cool, excuse my French, a lot of cool coverage at South by Southwest. Me and Nick are covering everything. We're planning a lot of stuff right now for the upcoming year. So, uh, again, I know it's months down the road or whatever, but it will be here before you know it. Uh, but, no, seriously, thank you all for just listening to the show and just supporting us, man. This Again, it truly means the world to us. Again, it'll be a two-year anniversary of the show come next month. So, to get where we are right now, thanks to you all and the support, man, it just, uh chef's kiss so thank you thank you thank you and of course as housekeeping of course uh you always find the show on spotify apple Podcasts, amazon music youtube music we also have a full audio show on our youtube page youtube.com backslash midway avenue productions um whether on spotify apple Podcasts, amazon music youtube music please rate the show review the show again share the word with us with your friends and family but to our apple Podcasts fans for some reason we were at we were at 50 ratings on Apple Podcasts, but for some reason now we're at, we're at 40 now or 39. So I don't know why we went down. We've been doing mm. – so, uh, yeah, see what, I'm, see what I'm saying? And they did the same shit over the summer. I'll I, I get my soapbox for a minute now. But over the summer, we hit 200, and then they go, nah. So now we went down again, which is – I don't I don't know what – is it because we like Night Swim? We didn't like Spendables 4. Is this, is this, this is our karma now? <laughs> like, we, we also liked uh, 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 The Exorcist Believer. I and we know. did. <laughs> I know. I, I, just, I just don't get it. I know, which is, again, also, that was a year ago. Hard to believe that was a, that was a year ago. But, you know, wow. this. Man, time fucking flies, bro. I, I, dude, you're telling me, man. It's like, oh, bro, my gosh. I got I got a gray in my beard, man. Oh, I got two, man. three of them, bro. Man, time to like put that that beard dye, my friend. <laughs> For real, man. What, fuck it, what? In, in Bad Boys Three, he's like, he's like, Mike, I put the dye in your beard, man. Like when he was in the hospital. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's, it's starting to feel like that, man. He's like, I rock the droop from your lips. <laughs> Man, that, I, that's that's my favorite Bad Boys movie. I, I think. Oh, it's so good. It's so rewatchable too. It's all, the, all, I mean, all of them are, but that one's really rewatchable. That um, one's really good. Uh, good. But uh, yeah, it's hard to be the year, but it's here, but it's you know, but again, as you all know, we are we are no. I think the beauty of our show, my friend, is that we're we're no stranger to not controversy, but we're very open with our thoughts and reviews. That we'll give you a no yeah. bullshit a no bullshit review. You might you might hate this movie that we actually love, or we might hate a movie that you love. And you know, what's the beauty of film? You know, beauty of film and TV is that everything's all subjective. You know, we can have different yeah. opinions. It's, it's okay to disagree. You know, Absolutely. we can have conversations about it, but you know, you you don't need to go so far as to be like like attacking <laughs> and antagonizing. It's like because at the end of the day, like it, it is also like just a movie, mm-hmm. respectfully. It's just but it's a like, movie. Yeah, it's like you know, because also like it's kind of fun to have. I, I I personally like to hear, like if I like a movie, I like to hear like why other people might not like a movie, just because I like to hear like different opinions and kind of like think about it. Like, oh yeah, like maybe I didn't even like consider that, but I'll still kind of have my own opinion of it. Absolutely. But it's you know it's it's just it's fun to hear just other people's perspectives I guess. I know what you mean. Yeah. I I know what you mean. That's um, that's what got me under that channel. Not to this is not a promotion, but just <laughs> like this is um an anecdote. Um, that's what got me onto this this YouTube channel called called Cinema Wins. Because you you've, oh, you've yeah. heard of Cinema, Cinema Sins, Sins. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, everything wrong with like as I, I when I first found them like I you know I thought the videos were funny and I was like oh yeah but then at at a certain point I was like I kind of just like like nitpicking and shitting on movies and I got kind of like tired of it and then um, blah 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 at some point like Iron Man two came out and there was a point where I was like yeah Iron Man two is like a bad movie and then I there was this this YouTube video called Everything Great About Iron Man two and it was by Cinema Wins and I was like. Okay, I'll check this out because I want to see if it can like maybe convince me if it's if it's not a bad movie. And I still feel I guess I kind of generally the the same about it, but I do I do enjoy it more because they did point out more stuff about it. But it's like 
you know, at the same time, it's like, nah, because it, it, it still kind of like was a little weak as, in comparison to the first one. Not to like compare, but it was just kind of like, I feel like the first one kind of set a standard and the second one just like didn't really like, like live up to it. You know what I mean? But yeah, it was just kind of, um, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know what you, I know what you mean. It's, it's fun. And I think there's, there's really like, there's, there's again, it, it, it is fun. Again, yeah, even that we might not like or whatever, it's still fun to see the good. You know why? Because taking a movie, yeah. making a movie is almost a, it, it, it's a, almost an impossible task. So guess what? Like, hey, it's an art too. A lot, of, a lot of people put a lot of hard work into it, despite it not not being well received or whatever. And then we'll get to the, obviously with Joker probably I do tonight. But no, I agree with that. It's 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 making a movie is a process, good or bad. And guess what? There's still a lot of craft to it. Could be a dog shit movie. It could be Night Swim. It could be Expendables Four, uh, but <laughs> there's people still put a lot of time and effort into that movie, um, despite the outcome. So it's always fair to give, give a movie a fair chance. So uh, I hope you guys give us a fair chance when you when listen to our Joker Folly I do review. <laughs> um, but speaking of DC, it's probably, it's probably a very heavy DC episode tonight, my friend. And you are the DC expert, DC, DC Marvel expert guru, oh, as, yeah. as we already know. Um, but I think it was yesterday or two days ago. They broke some pretty huge news that um, uh, we have. Our, we, had, we now have our John Stewart for the DCU uh, Lantern show. Correct. Yep, Aaron Pierre, known for Rebel Ridge on Netflix. Um, that movie just came out, and actually, like I, I kept hearing people like talk about it to because they were like, apparently his his name was just like in talks and like rumored and people were like well you know the character john stewart is a marine and in like rebel ridge he kind of plays a marine type of character and they, they said it's kind of like rambo a little bit that's why for too like, like yeah like, and i was yeah. i was i was checking it out today and like i didn't realize until I, I think like a week ago or something there was a youtube saying like that was him in that movie old like he oh, was, mid size the dan. That was on the yeah, mid size the dan. dan. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was like, I was like, yo, okay, because I, I remember that guy. Wow, but like, you know, like he he kind of you know he 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 just looks like really different in the excuse me in, in Rebel Ridge in Rebel Ridge. But um, I'm watching Rebel Ridge and I'm like the the way the movie is like it's yeah, it's is really it? good. It's it's really good so far. I wasn't able to finish it yet, but I'm I'm like I could completely see like DC John Stewart being in this type of situation and legit handling it like this so it's like okay i i, I really see what people mean and he's a he's a huge dude he's so he huge. could definitely you know he's he's got that he's got that superhero look and i, I think he would be a really good john stewart and also i'm just really excited to see john stewart on the big screen because john stewart right. was the first green lantern i was introduced to from the that that animated justice league series so to me he's 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 the main green lantern He's my personal favorite because that's the one that I grew up with. I didn't even find out about Hal Jordan until like years later. So it was kind of like a shock to me to hear that that he's considered the Green Lantern. I'm like, that guy? Because I'm like, I'm like, I don't know. And also like my 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 stepdad was in the military. So I, I think that was like another reason why I thought that John Stewart was so cool because he was a Marine. Um, and I was like, you know, I just it was just he was like a really cool character. I'm I am i am looking for again. I I'm gonna watch Rebel Ridge this weekend because I I have Netflix again after a little bit of a hiatus. Um, I'm gonna yeah. watch it this week. I, I gotta finish it too. Yeah, well, but honestly, probably talk about it next week on the podcast actually. Um, oh yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I remember seeing him in old, and I remember I, I remember the I I laughed up pretty loud. And he goes, and the, and the girl was like, "Oh my gosh, that's mid sized sedan," and I kind of <laughs> laughed because I was like, "Uh, M Night, <laughs> M Night." I was like, "My man." <laughs> I was like, for real. I was like, all oh right, bro. I, I, like, I was like, oh. why is that his name? Like, what the fuck? And that's a mid sized sedan. Man. And I said, ah, oh, night. I said, uh, that's why. Like, I'm gonna be real. What was it? It's now trap. Um, like at the cabin, old and glass. I really haven't mm -hmm. been really feeling. I mean, I liked. Like, to be fair, I did like knock at the cabin. I liked. I, I did like it, but wasn't like. It was no split or like six cents or or signs. Yeah, I wasn't feeling it because I was like, the whole time I'm like, I'm, it's, it, it kind of felt like it's it's all this like setup. Yeah, I'm and finished. then like, yeah, and then it just like kind of like, yeah, okay, well let's let's go home or whatever. I'm like, what the hell? 
Yeah. So so nothing really happened because I'm I'm expecting like some some shit to go down and it's like these natural disasters and they're like oh my gosh this is this is it I'm like okay like well like the first one I was like okay kind of seems a little bit of a coincidence but maybe that's the point or whatever and then like it kind of just kept happening like that I'm like y'all are just breaking into people's houses and saying this crazy shit <laughs> doing this crazy shit I'm like what the f-? like and then it's just uh, I don't even fully remember how it ends, but it was like, it just kind of, it just like fizzled out for me. All right, I, just, so, I, I was personally like, nah, I don't, I don't know about this one, man. All right. So spoilers for everyone who hasn't seen Knock at the Cabin. If you, if you want to tune out of this, come back. You, you've been warned. Okay. So spoiler alert. Um, Knock at the Cabin basically ends with um, one of the, one of the dads killing the other dad, killing his husband. And then him and his daughter, him and the daughter, um, they drive they drive off to a diner but then the the apocalypse ends basically just it just ends um and i guess because one of them had it one of them had to die but in the book apparently the book where the two husbands are trying to fight over like who's gonna kill who like no it's gonna be me it's gonna be me whatever and they accidentally shoot the little girl little the daughter the little asian girl and mm. so that apparently the the book that was the ending of the of the book, but I think I forgot what happened. But I think Knight didn't want to do like that ending, whatever. But um, I I do like I do I I think as Batista's like one of his best roles as an actor, um, and that really showcased his performance of like an actor. And we we said all the time too about no offense to the Rock or John Cena, but Dave Batista has now worked with some pretty big directors. Um, yeah. Denis M. Knight. Um, yeah, his, his role in Blade Runner, like, I was like, whoa, yeah. he's, th- this guy can really act. Yeah, he shows some like, chops. He was insane. And he was just, just kind of like his, like, yeah, it was just, he was he was really, really good in that movie. And it's like, he was just, a, it was such like a weird kind of character because it's like, you're a farmer, but you're like this giant fucking dude. And you got these, you know, but you still seem kind of, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it's just like, <laughs> what, what the hell's going on here? He's, he looked like a fucking, like, live action anime character. Yeah. And, and the it, scenes where he was, where he was fighting Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Uh, Gosling. Through, through the fucking wall. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, bro. Through the talking about wall. miracles and shit. I'm like, this is insane. I'm like, what a fucking <laughs> opening scene. I, I I haven't done my I, I'm I'm gonna do a newsletter for our listeners hopefully this week or this weekend when I have some time, um but my newsletter I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, yeah I'm, it's not it's not a review right now but I just saw the other day I was kind of bored so I went to, I went to the uh like Regal to watch um a movie called The Killers Game. Wait, which one was that? Well, this movie fucking suck. I'll tell you I'll tell you that right away. Wait, um, not, not the not the Batista movie. Yes, with Terry oh. Crews is in it. Yo, again, I I'll, I'll do I'll do more of like a like pass or watch it on, and when I do a newsletter for our listeners. But I'll say I'll tell you right, I'll warn you right away. Don't this movie fucking sucked. Like it, I I legit fell asleep too at like one point where I was like, okay, I'm awake, and it, it just the, the movie is awful. The movie is terrible. And I said, wow. I said, what? Come on, Batista, you're better than this. Terry Crews, <laughs> I Terry Crews to me was the only good thing about that movie, and he's trying his best. But hmm. I was like. This movie was rough. This movie was really rough. T- again, and I'll, I'll talk about more on that newsletter in no time, but I'll tell you right now, Nick, avoid this movie at all costs. I'm telling you, avoid this movie at all costs. It is a waste of fucking time. It is it is a action it is a action is a it is a film student who wants to be action director's wet dream. This is like the Dollar Tree Michael Bay. 100 percent Yikes. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Dollar Tree Michael Bay. <laughs> It's like what the hell, and that, that is quite the pitch, Douglas. Don't like. I'm kind of like I. I got to see it just because of that. It's bad. It's so bad, dude. It's. I was like, oh, wow. And I said, all right, well, that happened. And I'm not gonna lie to you. I'll be honest with you. It's so bad that I didn't even do an attitude reaction to it because I was like, I saw late. <laughs> I saw, I saw late at night. This too. man just walked out the theater and went I, home. I bro, but I, I, sw- I swear to you, Nick, it's what I did. I, I ended. I said, "Wow, I was I was in a bad mood." It was also late at night too. I said, "You know what? I'm going home." I said, "Fuck this!" I literally walked out of the Rico. Walked to the Rico. I walked to my apartment. I said, "I'm done." <laughs> it's I was just, bad mood. <laughs> and That's listen, crazy, man. And you and I have seen some shit the past couple of years that we still had the reaction for. This was the first time in two years where I was like, "Nah." <laughs> I said, "Nah." I'm 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 tired. I'm upset. I I just walked home. <laughs> 
you drove there, but you walked home. That's how I, upset you were. I know, right? And you know my theater. You see, you see the theater from my apartment, as you know. So I was yeah. just like, yeah, I was like, yeah, shit. So I'm honestly, it is not wor- not worth your time. I love Batista. Uh, ben Kingsley, shame on you. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do a pass, Cedar pass it, and the newsletter I do for the, our, our viewers this week. But yeah, don't Nick. I'm telling you, bro, don't waste your time. It's it's that bad. That's rough. That's that's like a maybe stay in the house and watch the type of movie, huh? It's I, I would put it as low as Expendables four. But oh but, damn. But but to, to be fair though, I had a better time watching Expendables four with you than I did watching Killer's Game. Hundred percent. Oh damn. That's because you didn't watch Killer's Game with me. I, you know what? Then, man? then it would have been an Expendables <laughs> Four situation where it was like, "Hey, that movie was bad, but it was pretty fucking funny." I, I should, dude, I should have. I don't know. I, I, I went because, like, I think I wanted to go see something else, and I, it was like, I was like, uh, uh, and then I was like, "Oh, what else is playing?" And I was like, "Okay, I'll see this." And I was just like, ten minutes in, I was like, "I regret this." I was like, mm. "I regret this already." And I was like, "Okay," and then I was like, "What?" I'll probably get better. I and it got, that. it got worse again. I, and I dozed off like at one point. I was like, oh shit. I woke up and I was like, I don't, I don't even care. I didn't even care to like miss what I missed. I was like, it is what it is. <laughs> Damn. But yeah, I'll, I'll do a I'll do a I'll do a quick cover on that. We're, we're do a newsletter for our for uh, our viewers this week. So that uh yeah, that, that happened. But Green Lantern, <laughs> everybody. Green Lantern. So yes, we have, we have, we, have a, we have a Green Lantern. We have a uh we have a, we, have, we have, now we have a, a John Stewart and a Hal Jordan and Kyle Chandler. Yep, we're, we're, what do you think about Kyle Chandler as Hal Jordan? You know, to me, Kyle Chandler, you know, the movie I think of, the movie I think of him a lot of, it was, I personally love him a lot to me, is Super 8. I, I, I love mm. Super 8 because I feel like I haven't seen a really an original J.J. Abrams movie in a fucking, like, forever. So um, I, 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 do li- I really do like him a lot in Super 8. Um, you know, he was funny in? He was really good in Game Nights. Yeah, I heard about that, yeah. I got. I, I really got to watch that. Oh, Damn. you, you and Kalen. Okay, I will again. I, I will say this. I will this time for real. I will send you my my movies anywhere. My Voodoo login. You and Kalen got to watch Game Night. Game Night. Thank you, bro. <laughs> game Night. <laughs> oh my god, dude. Game Night is fucking super underrated and fucking hilarious. It is. Mm-hmm. It is so so funny. It's a movie that came out in 2018, and I think to me. That was the last good year of comedies for studio comedies because we had Game Night, Tag, and Blockers all in the same year. I was thinking about Blockers when you said that. Dang, all in the same year. That was a great year for comedies, and all those movies fucking tanked. And it's just like, okay. That's a shame because Blockers was funny as hell. So funny. Um, he was also, honestly, I, 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 know he was, I, know, I know he was big in uh, with that Friday Night Lights show, but you know what? There's two roles I think of other than Game Night and a Super 8. He was really good as the, as the FBI agent in Wolf of Wall Street. He was oh, really yeah. good, and also too a movie that I I love that people kind of hate. I don't. I think it's a really good movie. Is uh the spectacular now with Miles Teller? Hmm. Okay. Um, I personally love that movie. People who I met can't. I hope people I know the same movie hate that movie for some reason. And I I can I think people hate it for. I don't want to spoil anything, but like there there's a reason why I think, Miles Teller's not a likable dude whatsoever. But I'm a sucker mm. for like coming of age movies like that. Um, that that's that's why you like it. I I do. Miles Teller is not not a likable dude. Not a likable dude. Mm-hmm. I'll be honest. But however, the movie is also it was also very early A twenty four, like very like first A twenty four year one or two, whatever. So mm-hmm. I like the movie a lot because again, it's also Sean Levy produced it. It's a very mm-hmm. it's a movie that you're not supposed to like the main character, but at the same time, I feel like if you again all high you know, I think it came out when we were in high school too so like I can relate to it it's like oh yeah I'm, high, I'm a high schooler I can experience this for the first time but, 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 but whatever um, it's still a movie that I think everyone should watch it also has a great soundtrack um, but Kyle Chandler plays his like deadbeat dad in that movie um, and has a great monologue that's like one of the like, the best monologues I've seen in a movie in, like in like years um, and he was very good in that. So I think he's, I think it would be a good choice. Good. I think Josh Brolin to me, I was like, I don't really see it. Um, but he's I was, w- I was excited for the Josh Brolin one. Cause really? I'm like, that's, that's yeah. Cause like, that's just real. I never would have expected him to, to really be Hal Jordan, but I like him as an actor. So it was kind of like, I would, I would kind of like to actually see a Josh Brolin, how Jordan Green Lantern and especially in the overall DCU. So I'm like, I just, it was, it was cool because it was different and kind of unexpected to me, but like he, he is a really good actor too. So I'm like, I would, I would really be interested in seeing his take on it. 
Um, and then it was like, well, he's he's out. So now it's like maybe Chris Pine, I think Ewan McGregor, um, and like Matthew McConaughey. I, I heard those names and I'm like, I really like Matthew McConaughey. I feel like that would be really cool because um, you know, I get like I I've been thinking about this show a lot lately, but True Detective season one. Still gotta watch that. I still gotta watch that. Ugh. It's it's good, man. It's 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 dope. But like, if they were to do that, but he's a Green Lantern instead, and it exists with this um, James Gunn, David Corn sweat Superman, like that would be really cool. And it's and it's it's a True Detective style story anyway. Right. So now you have another reason to watch it. So so it's like okay, and he would he would fit perfect in that because that's what he did already, and you know and then you know him paired up with with the with the John Stewart character which would just be really interesting to see in that kind of scenario um but yeah but um then they were like Kyle Chandler and I was like Kyle Chandler like I <laughs> and that, that that's like no disrespect like cuz he's he's a good actor but it was just kind of like it just seemed a little bit like out of the blue to me and I never I never would have expected him to to be Hal Jordan, but the the more that I think about it, the more I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, I, I I can, I think I can see like what he's going for, but I, I guess to me, with all due respect to Kyle Chandler, it just in my opinion, an actor like Josh Brolin or Matthew McConaughey just would have been. I feel like they kind of would have like taken it that extra step. I see what you mean. You know what I mean, and um, I just I I I like the the Kyle Chandler movies that I've seen, but I just felt like I didn't really get those same like Josh Brolin, Matthew McConaughey type vibes. I see. I, I you know what I I, I know where you're coming from. I think I, I I know what you I know what you mean. I more more like more of a grit more of a grittier actor. More of a, yeah, more, yeah, more greedy. I know yeah, exa- exactly, exactly. I know what um, you. I know what you mean. Kyle Chandler just seems a little bit more clean cut. I see. I see what you mean. I think. Yeah, thank you, man. But Aaron Pierre as as Cashley. John Stewart. Oh hell yeah! Especially because you know I, I started uh, Rebel Ridge. I'm like, oh hell yeah! I could totally see it. Yeah. This this could just be like you know this is something I went through before I got the ring. Uh, interesting. Yeah, I'm definitely watching this movie this weekend as we talk about. So, excuse me, so, so we'll probably talk about it next week for sure. So mm-hmm. let's let's yes, definitely yes. let's definitely talk about that next week. And then, okay, before we move on here, so right now the director of the series is James Hawes, and James Hawes' resume is a movie called One Life. Never heard of it. Um, mm-hmm. A show called Slow Horses, I think, is a pretty popular show on Apple TV. Um, a show called Raised by Wolves. A lot of television. Um, Wait, the the sci-fi Raised by Wolves. Yes, sir. With, yes, sir. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. That was. And then, which one was the the one that you said before that? So slow sheep, slow, slow horses is like a pretty popular show on Apple TV right now with uh, Gary Oldman. I, Gary like, Oldman, right? Like, it's like like yes. they're like a, a mini spy agency or something. Yes, I heard it's really good. It's pretty popular. Pretty Interesting. Po- pretty popular show. Okay. A popular show. Um. So, but he also did two two episodes of Black Mirror. Surprisingly. Um, mm. he did. Uh, don't remember this one. Do you know this one? Hated in the nation. Not that one. No. Okay, and then the one he did. I remember this one. It was called wait, Smither. Wait, 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 my bad. Which which one was Hated in the Nation? So about? was that about the the lady that's like running through and it's like she's like looking for help? Uh, Hated in the Nation is in a near future London. Police detective Karen Park. And her tech savvy sidekick Blue, huh, Blue, uh, investigate a string of mysterious deaths with the sinister link to social media. Oh, okay, interesting. I've not seen that one. I was thinking of something else. And w- what was the other Black Mirror episode that he did? That was uh, Smithereens. You know that one? It was with uh, Damson Indris um, and Topher Grace and Andrew Scott, where Uber driver kidnaps um, a worker from a te- from like a pretty big tech firm, um, and basically. Um, he he um, Andrew Scott it holds Damson Indris uh, hostage until Topher Grace, who plays his boss, gives him like all this money, whatever. And it's kind of just like this like few a couple hours standoff between the police and the kidnapper. Mm-hmm. Um, it just I don't know. It's it was just like I, I I think it was like 
it wasn't money based, but I think it was. I, I don't want. I don't want. I don't want to like. Um, I don't want to like reveal anything. But I think it was like politically based, whatever. Mm, um, okay. But it was out of that season. That season to me was kind of very weak. That was a season with like uh, striking vipers. Um, oh, I heard about that one. That one is a trip. And then the other one was with um, Molly Cyrus, which I thought was whack. That episode that episode was whack. So that to me was a very weak season of Black Mirror. Um, mm-hmm. But Smithereens. You think they were trying too hard? Yeah, because also it was a f- three or four year hiatus. So they were like, kind of like, they don't have anything to kind of like really like show. But I'm with you on that. Try a little too hard. And the one, again, I don't want to spoil the one with you know, Anthony Mackie and, and Yaga Abdul Mateen the second, but you feel kind of dirty after watching that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> cause I, cause I, remember, I remember you and Hom, I, we saw Army of the Dead. You and Hamler brought it up. And I said, wait, what? And I was like, oh, okay. And I watched it and I was like, I feel kind of dirty after watching <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I said, uh, I mean, okay, but again, it was great performances from both Yaya and Anthony Mackie. But when you watch it, you're gonna be, you're gonna be like, I gotta shower and turn off my PlayStation for a while. <laughs> what the hell happened in it? I, okay, we, oh, you know what? We I, again, I, I can't say we should watch it together, bro. Because you're one of my best friends. But I think you should, you should definitely watch it for yourself. <laughs> And come okay. back to me with, with notes, like we, we, I mean, we can definitely watch it together. But it's a show that we're gonna, that you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, uh, oh, right now again. It's a very ambiguous and very ambitious episode of television in general. Uh, mm. But I was very surprised they took it that far, where I was like, all right. <laughs> um, it's still worth the watch. Again, it was a good performance from Yaya and Anthony Mackie, but yeah, you definitely feel dirty after watching the episode. <laughs> Damn. Um, so okay, so he did that, and then sorry, back sorry, back to Green Lantern after my little Black Mirror tangent. Um, the <laughs> ri- the writers of the show is Damon Lindelof, who did Lost, and he also wrote the Star Trek movies with J.J. Abrams, and he also did the Watchmen series mm-hmm. as well. Right, right. Um, and then you have Tom King. Who Ooh. Tom King he wrote Superpower the DC story. Um so I don't know much about Tom King, do you? Yeah, he also wrote um some some of the uh the Batman comics as well. Oh, interesting. I think it was it was in the 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 DC Rebirth era. No, yeah, okay. it was. It was cuz yeah, 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 I remember. I didn't I almost spoiled it, but it was that, and I think he, he wrote a couple other like comic lines, but um, that's that's more so where I know him from. I think he wrote like a Superman comic not not too long ago too, but but yeah, that's that's uh that's interesting that he's gonna be working on it. And the- I'm really excited to see where it goes. I have a theory. Yeah, what's that? But I, I Tell feel us. like because when when James Gunn said it's gonna be like a true detective style show, but it's gonna be how Jordan and John Stewart and they're gonna be like investigating something on Earth, but it's gonna have like huge ramifications. In the comics, I I I wanna say it was Final Crisis, which came out in the early two thousands. There was a scene towards the beginning of it where Hal Jordan and John Stewart were investigating the death of it was this character, Orion. But it was like, it was it was something like weird. Like he was just recently found, but the wound, or like the bullet or something that was in him was like I think it was like the, like his wound was like fifty years older than the moment in time, which means like the thing that killed him, like the bullet must have like traveled through time to kill him or something like that. Interesting. And it was kind of like, so what what the fuck is going on here? And you know, it not to spoil it, but it, it led into the uh, eventually the 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 events of final crisis so when i hear that it's those same two investigating something weird on earth it makes me think like okay i wonder if they're gonna lead to that that to to final crisis type of event do you do you okay i'm asking you this do you think they're gonna keep the the vibe of true detective throughout the entire season i really hope so okay because one thing I would also like to see in the DCU is like each movie has a completely different feel. So like I would like a bright and shiny kind of hopeful Superman movie 
while at the same time getting a, a dark gritty like Green Lantern series. You know, just because yeah. it's like, why would like why would one person's movie feel exactly the same way as another person's movie? Like it would be interesting if it was like this is a big universe, so it's a bunch of different shit going on. So it's not always gonna feel like you know, like Superman feels and like I'm you know, I, I would want like the authority to feel different from Superman and, and the Green Lantern series, you know what I mean? And like Absolutely. the Amazon series, you know what I mean? So it's like so when they all like clash and, and meet, it's like it really feels like worlds colliding. And it's you know, like as as great as the Marvel movies are, I never like really, really got that feeling. I it kind of yeah. just got mm-hmm. it, it had this like really sameness feel but just in different places mm-hmm. but it all kind of feels the same mm-hmm. more or less i i know exactly what because you mean the dc was like no nah, i i want to change that bro like I, I i want like you know i just you know i want i want more like creativity like that right i know exactly what you mean oh dude is that, i mean i mean yeah, t- take a bow for that i mean well well said i i, I could i couldn't agree with you, any, you, any, you. any better because i feel like because the, so the third writer of the show is Chris Mundy, and Chris Mundy wrote on Ozark, uh, a show called Bloodline, mm. and he also wrote True Detective, but the last season, season four, which I heard was a bit of a departure from the other seasons, like it was very different compared to seasons one through three. Um, oh, the one with Jodie Foster. Yeah, which I heard like, either, it's very different compared to like seasons one, two, and three, but still wrote for True Detective, so I guess what they're going for. Mm. I'm kind of with you, dude, and this is kind of my fear too. As we said on the show multiple times, and we had you know conversation about this outside of the podcast, is that my fear is that I don't want James Gunn to be like, "Now it's Guardians of the Galaxy in space." I don't want that. I do not want that. I want if if you're gonna do True Detective, I'm with that. Keep it True Detective on space and on and on um, and on um, um, on on Earth. I do not want James Gunn to be like, "Guess what, guys." We're gonna make it goofy and cosmic. It's like, uh, 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 no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, no, because no. when when they when they announced no. that he was gonna be like kind of the uh, one of the he was gonna be like the Kevin Feige of of the DCU. I was I was a little bit nervous to that because it was like, yo, I, I like the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, but I still have this kind of general opinion that like they're still kind of soft as as fun as they are. Like it's right. Like, I kind of wanted to be like Pirates of the Caribbean and Space Loki. Like, I like see what you mean. when I say that, it's like, well, like each of the the main characters, like yes, they're the film's antagonists, but they're all like really scummy people. It's just that we're watching a movie that happens to follow how these these guys like met and went on these like crazy adventures. But it was just like you know, again, because this is Disney, so it's like we can't really take it that far. Well, I mean, ironically, Pirates of the Caribbean was Disney too, but it was just like. That movie kind of did take it far. Like that movie was like dark and creepy and bloody and and shit like that. And so it was, it's like I would what I, like it's like I would want it to like kind of like go there right. at least as far as like character versions, you know. And it was I'll, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I'm with you on that, especially because like I feel like when Pirates of the Caribbean came out, and I'll be again, I'm, I'm not gonna pull a Joel, but like at the time, Disney was kind of taking more quote unquote mature risks or adult yeah. risks. Where yeah. even now that they have Fox, they own Fox. I mean, yeah, we got Alien Romulus, but we haven't really got like. I'm trying to think. We haven't really got like material like parts of the Caribbean, especially the first Curse of the Black Pearl, or even the, the OG trilogy with World's End, Dead Man, Dead Man Chess, whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But you know, I, I hope, I really hope that if this is going to be a T- HBO, HBO Max, whatever series, do a TV MA. Yeah, yep. look, look, look again. Are the penguins really good? I've seen the penguin yet. Again, you do you do a TVMA thing, make it dark. Then you like I think pitch at one time too. Do like a training day kind of style too. Do kind of like a you know oh, like yeah. something like that, very dark and gritty and you know just kind of just like just like really kind of just like fucked up stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. So if you can do that with your detective or training day kind of vibe, keep the TVMA. But I just I my my fear is that James Gunn now being the kind of you said Kevin Feige the head of this DC stuff. I don't want him to be like, guess what, man? I want in space. I want to have like um, an Elvis song or this song, whatever. It's like, mm-hmm. no, dude. Like, no, 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 no. Like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna commit to a theme or commit to like a really kind of like dark and gritty take on a, on a on a property like this, commit to it. Commit yep. to it. I do not. I do not want to see Hal and and John out. You know, playing. You know, like I don't know. Like example, like 
David Bowie, whatever. It's like, oh, good. So, hoo, hoo. Like how, you know, as again, Guardians of the Galaxy has awesome soundtracks. I get it. And that worked for the property of those movies. But my fear is just like James Gunn might have a little too much of an input into this where it's like, no, 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 no. Commit to a really gritty, true detective, dark, you know, really kind of just like street level story, even though it's in space. But like, just commit to it. So that's, that's that's kind of my fear, you know. It just, I don't yeah. know. I don't I'm know. with that. Ho- hopefully, he does it. Like, I, I am kind of like when when I because I'll admit when I, when I saw the Superman suit at first, I was like, hmm, you know, it's like okay, it feels a little bit, you know, kind of like a little baggy, a little bit like Guardians of the Galaxy esque. And it's like I was, I was hoping for something like, like a little bit different. But it's like okay, but the the movie overall, and like from what I'm hearing about the movie, it's like apparently it's. It's, it's really good and it, it looks like it's going to be really good because it's also like while I do have some reservations about it admittedly I still am going into it with the notion that because like everything that I'm seeing about it and hearing about it it's like it really feels like he's putting his heart and his soul into this movie and so that gives me hope that it it's going to be like good and and you know because I, I love the character of Superman as well, you know, he's, he's my favorite superhero. So to hear that, uh, J- James Gunn, like, j- like cares just as much, I guess. And like, he's, he's really passionate about the character. Like that makes me think like that makes me get excited about the movie. Cause now we, we have someone making a movie about a character that they care about. Right. And a lot of the times, you know, it's like, you'll, you'll get like a, um, you'll have, you'll have a particular character, but, the director was kind of just someone for hire. It's like, I don't really yeah. care about the character. I'm just like a talented enough filmmaker to have gotten this job. And that's something that I don't want with Superman with James Gunn. Cause also with like, you know, Superman legacy. I was like, that's, that's, that's a cool title, but he's, you know, when it came out, it's just going to be Superman. I was like, interesting. You know what I mean? It's like, cause that's, yeah. that's bold right there. Oh, it is. Oh yeah. That's, that, that's, that's me saying this right here is a definitive Superman film. Just just by calling it just solely Superman, that's like, okay, okay, I gotta see this. Yeah. What you're cooking up back there, Mr. James Gunn. So that that makes me that makes me excited and, and hopeful for the movie. Yeah. Oh we I'm I'm ho- I'm hopeful too. I'm I'm hopeful about it. Obviously, we talked about the show that we're hopeful and you're the you're you are the Superman fan out of all of us. So I'm I'm looking I'm definitely looking forward to um, I'm definitely looking forward to you know seeing it with you next year when it comes out. Um, but yeah, so again, I'm looking forward to this Lantern show. If it commits the bit, make it gritty, make it street, make it very kind of like Antoine Fuqua, make it kind of David Ayer a little bit, like make it just yeah. kind of like True Detective. True Detective season one. Yeah. Specifically season one. Yeah, I, I'm going to watch True Detective before the show comes out, obviously, but I'll probably watch that hopefully sooner than later. It's, it's just, good, bro. It's I, good. I do, I know. And I fucking love McConaughey and Woody Harrelson. Um and then I'm watching Rebel Ridge this weekend too. But I think uh, I think this is good casting. I think it's good casting. I think it's going to yeah. be something really special if they can if they commit if they commit and like really pull this off. So we shall see whenever the show comes. I think it's next year or 2026, I believe. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. So we'll see how that turns out. All righty, yeah. all righty, guys. As again, this is a very DC heavy episode. We're going to be transitioning now to our review of Joker Fale Adu. Or Joker two, um, and this is gonna be a very again. I you know this movie this weekend. I don't know what happened. Uh, it underperformed with thirty seven point five million dollars, which is crazy. You know, which is not great for a movie that has two hundred million dollar plus budget. Um, and for some context, the first one made ninety six million dollars opening weekend, and as you all know, um, it was the f- for about until two months ago was the first and only one billion rated R movie of all time Deadpool Wolverine have now taken that top title now as number two as second as second because it was, it's still the biggest now rated R movie of all time Deadpool Wolverine but now there's two uh, rated, R, rated R billion dollar films um, and the first one got Joaquin Phoenix and Oscar uh, the composer um, Hildur I'm looking at her name talented composer uh, won her won, uh, won Oscar for her, comp- her, comp- her beautiful composing and got Todd Phillips uh, Best Director nomination a lot of nominations for that movie um, it was a very be- not beloved movie but it was a very huge success when it came out in 2019 and then obviously we were surprised like oh look uh, 
uh, number and the second one's coming out, and all of us were like, oh, okay. Um, but this movie is very divisive. It's very polarizing, I feel like now. Um, Nick and I saw it in 70 millimeter IMAX uh, week opening nights for a pretty, I would say it was pretty packed. Don't you agree? It was, it was pretty crowded. Yeah, especially for IMAX. Bro. Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty, cr- pretty crowded. And basically, Joker Folly do, which is his follow up to the first, you know, billion dollar hit, Oscar winning hit. Uh, Joker Folly do it follows uh, struggling with his dual identity, failed comedian Arthur Fleck meets the love of his life, Harley Quinn, while incarcerated at Arkham State Hospital. Nick, as the de- also for our, to our to our listeners too, we're going to do non spoiler in the front. Spoiler in the back, so I'll let you know when we when we do our spoiler review, our review. But Nick, my friend, as the DC expert guru that you are, what were your thoughts of Joker Fale Adu? So it's 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 kind of ironic that that you bring up my 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 fandom of the DC because so I'm I'm going into this movie basically understanding that yes it is like it's it's. it's it it is technically DC, but it's not really like it's not really trying to be like a comic book accurate right DC movie. It's just a particular take on a uh, certain DC character. So I'm I, w- I was kind of looking at it like that. So going into it, you know, they again non spoilers, but they they took the story in a direction I didn't expect. So, like, when I noticed, like, okay, so th- it seems like this is where we're going. I'm just like, okay, well, well, how well are they doing this? You know what I mean? And I, I just felt like for what they did, they did a really good job with it. You know what I mean? Like, it was it was good for what it was. Um, I'm not saying I necessarily expected it to go that way. But, <laughs> the, you know what I mean? But the way that it went, I'm like, uh, okay, sure, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm with it, you know. I'm, I'm not mad at it. But um, you know, when we get into in the spoilers, um, I'll be able to get my full thoughts on it. But overall, um, I liked it. I, I thought it was a good movie. Um, yeah, I had a good time. But it's weird because it seems like everywhere, like every review is like, "Yo, this movie sucks," and like da 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 da. And you know, when, when we get into spoiler talk, I'll I'll get into my thoughts on that a little bit deeper. Um, but, but no, like it was it was solid. I'm like, yeah, it was it was dope. Uh, do you think to our to our viewers? Do you think it would be? Do you think it's worth seeing in seventy millimeter IMAX? Hell yeah, yeah. hell yeah! I'd see everything in seventy millimeter IMAX if I could. Oh, I fucking wish, right? Oh, Sheesh. that's a world I want to live in. Fuck this place. I'm gonna live oh in my it. god, everything seventy millimeter IMAX. Oh, I would I would move my bed into the fucking <laughs> seventy millimeter <laughs> m- millimeter <laughs> IMAX room? That's how I would wake up, like. <laughs> Like projector man, put on Man of Steel, please. Thank you. Oh, dude! Mm. Like I as know. soon as I wake up, bro. Could you imagine? Oh, oh my god, dude! Oh my god! Imagine yeah. meditating to that movie in fucking seventy millimeter IMAX as soon as you wake oh, up. You, you would be a different breed. The, I really, it probably won't happen anytime soon. But you know, Snyder shot both BBS and his Justice League in one four three seventy millimeter IMAX. And mm. we obviously at our at our AZ mills here, we just uh, they finally re-upped the one one four one point four three one point one point four three seventy millimeter IMAX last year for Oppenheimer that you and I saw, and then they did it again for Dune too, and now for Joker Folly Adu. Um, but I would I would I mean in a heartbeat I would love to see BVS and uh, Snyder's cut Snyder's cut on one four oh dude. Please. Especially the Snyder cut, bro. Oh, oh my one four three gosh. dude and seventy millimeter dude. Holy shit. Um, so I know. I can't even comprehend. Oh, uh, dude, I know. As I'm I know, taking the whole week oh, off of dude, work, bro. In a heartbeat. That's why I'm hyped to go see. I'm just, I'm uh, just teasing. Uh, I mean, hey, shit. I mean, you went wrong for doing that. Um, <laughs> that's why I can't wait to see Interstellar with you in December at one four three seventy millimeters. We haven't seen that yet in that in that format. Um, that's gonna be insane. Oh, I can't. I cannot wait. That's gonna be something different. I cannot fucking wait. Um, so. But obviously, yeah, one point four three. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm with you again. As you, as we all know, like here at the reaction, that we were definitely more of a positive review of this movie. As Nick said too, mm-hmm. like we walked out and you go on YouTube or Instagram or whatever. Fuck this movie! This movie fucking sucks. Blah 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 blah. And at the time, I'm like, 
man, y'all are, y'all are so mad over this movie. Like for for what? And yeah, as I said too, is it as good as the first one? No. Is it as bad people are saying it, it is? No. Um, I think it's a movie that is very ambitious, very ambiguous. Um, it's not saying much, but this is definitely Todd Phillips' quote unquote best sequel. Um, again, not saying much, but um, <laughs> but I. That's cold, it, man. That's cold. It's. <laughs> I do have to give him props for, I get props, either you like him or don't. There's a lot of ambitious takes, a lot of ambitious, you know, you know, uh, direction and approaches to this character and to this movie. Um, do all of them work? No. Uh, some of them work? I think they do. I also, I'll be real. I think this is a better looking movie than the first one, personally. Again, maybe because hmm. I'm a I'm a slut for 1.43 IMAX, 70 millimeter IMAX, because like, I'm a sucker for that kind of stuff. But I'm watching it because I watched the first one, obviously, in theaters, and I watched the first one on 4K the other day uh, on, my, on my 4K TV. And I was like, mm, it's a, again, it's a very well shot movie, but it's a very like high def movie, too. You're like, mm, okay. But in this one, well, because the IMAX cameras, those 70 millimeter shot in film, obviously, there's more of a grit to it in certain mm-hmm. scenes. Like when they're in the prison, in the courtroom, or there's a shot, you know, when they're outside or whatever. But I just feel like, there's more of a grit to it with the cinematography and this the IMAX ratio stuff like that where I was like, huh, I I, I like this the look of this movie a lot more than the first one. There's a shot especially in the opening after the opening credits where it's like they go they kind of pull, pull into like the lights flicking on and during the during the Arkham prison scene I was like, wow, this is a very well uh shot movie. And uh Lauren Shore who does all those movies with him does like the Hangover movies, War Dogs, um Due Date uh, very again, incredible cinematography in this movie. Uh, Phoenix and Gaga are great in this movie. They have great chemistry, obviously. Again, it's a very as Nick said last week in our the reaction. It's a different direction for Harley Quinn. It's not the Margot Robbie animated Mr. J, you know, not that kind of like very typical Harley Quinn. And I think a lot of people aren't happy with that. Which again, again as Nick said too, it's not the typical Joker movie because it's a DC film, but. Not a traditional DC film that we've seen the past couple of years with the DCEU or even you know back then whatever. Um, and again, yeah, it's, a, it's a particular take on these particular yes, characters. Partic- yes, a particular take on the particular characters. Absolutely. Um, I, again, I will. I will say. I will say. I think you and I both said this too. Although we enjoyed it, I think you and I both can safely say that this was definitely not needed. Yeah. Right. It, it just... was kind of like like how I view the um the 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 fifth Jason Bourne movie where like, yes where Matt Damon came back where it's like he, you you completed the arc and then you, you made a a solid movie after that but it, like in the grand scheme of things like yeah uh, but like what's what's he gonna do now because he already he, he's already like fulfilled his his arc in the in the first. Right, so, you know what I mean. So it's just kind of like, it was, it was, not the most necessary movie. Having said that, I think they did a pretty good job with it. I I completely agree. I, that's a perfect way to compare it to the Jason Bourne movies. A- absolutely. And I remember when the movie ended. You and I both were like, "Yeah, we 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 enjoyed that. Like we we, like, yeah, we this was this was a good. We enjoyed this. Movie. That was pretty pretty solid. Um, yeah, it was good. I, I do I do think. Again, not a spoiler for right now, but um, but there again, I think again, I said Gaga and Phoenix are really great in this. I think the performances that are great in this. I thought Brendan Gleeson was really good in this. I thought uh, uh, Catherine Keener, who plays his lawyer, was really good in this too. Brendan Gleeson to me was really good in this. I felt like wow, there were some times where I was like, dude, you're fucking Mad Eye Moody, man. You're killing, you're killing this. Uh, you're, I don't you're, know, like, you're, you're you're really good in this. You know, it definitely has. We said a little bit of a Shawshank feel to it at times. Um, uh, you're not as good as Shawshank Redemption, obviously. Obviously, you oh, know, yeah. not, not compare the compare the two. What's whatsoever, whatsoever. Um, and something else. What do we also compare it to? We compared to something else too. We compared to Shawshank and something else. I forgot. It was Shawshank. I think. Go ahead. I want to say not not a few good men. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Was it that? Because it, yes. it was a whole courtroom. Stuff. Yes. Thank you, Nick. Uh, again, bravo, my friend. Bravo. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Think about. Um, yes. A uh, few good men. Because it's it's, it's definitely a courtroom 
prison drama. And I, again, I think if you go that, if you go, go, go if you know that going inside this movie, going watching this movie, just be prepared. It is a courtroom prison drama for for sure. Um, yeah, I, I feel like that's kind of what was throwing some people off to a little bit. Right, and when the spoilers will 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 explain really kind of that that same that same reason. It um, and I think, and I do think that. I, again, I, I think Todd Phillips, as I said before too, I think he's a better director when he's doing one and dones. Well, again, one Hangover movie was more than enough. Um, one Joker movie more than enough. I just do think there's some filmmakers that are better off doing one films and no follow up or sequels. I think Todd mm. Phillips is his weakness is doing sequels or follow ups, and I think people were saying a lot of this movie was that. Oh, he copied yeah, Scorsese from Taxi Driver and uh, King of Comedy, the first one. With this one, he was kind of just not copying anything. He's kind of doing it himself. And it's like, got to give him props for being ambiguous, ambitious as this movie really is. Um, like I said, a beautiful shot. I think the score on this is be- beautiful. Um, and I do think that this movie – also, too, I think I laugh at this movie more than the first one at times. There were certain Dude. things, you know, there was certain thing like there's a scene in like prison with like him doing an autograph that was kind of funny. And there was mm-hmm. there was certain things like oh, that's kind of funny. Or, or when he puts his hand on Brendan Gleason and they get slapped the fuck out of by Brendan Gleason. <laughs> that was hilarious. It was like, God damn. And everyone was laughing. We were like, shit. It was like, well, it was like hey man, that ain't even necessary right there. Yeah, we were like, damn, that's on that's uncalled for. Yeah. Um and I, I and, and again, and I do think and this to keeping this to non spoiler this movie had a budget of 200 million dollars plus while the first one had a budget of 50 mil and the first one was praised for that for having like a really smaller you know decent budget and now this one had 200 mil the whole time i'm like why in the hell did you guys spend a lot more money on this one what's more of a tamer movie quote unquote tamer movie and I don't know. To me, it's like as we learned last year from from the box office last year with Indiana Jones flopping, Mission Impossible flopping, Fast flopping, The Flash flopping. Like a lot of great movies last year flopped, and they lost a lot of money. Why have that? We not learned from that mistake of like you don't need to spend two hundred million dollars plus marketing distribution. So you're looking at three fifty four hundred mil for this movie. Including mm-hmm. marketing, obviously, it's like wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Why are we spending this money? And the whole time watching this, I'm like, is it because of, is it because of you know salaries? Is it because of this whatever? And I think Top Up had kind of not the best answer where he was like, well, you know, people got to eat, right? And I'm just like, yeah, I don't know about that. And I was like, you seem to be eating just fine in the first movie, just fine. And you were able to do a lot with that, with that, with that budget. Um, so I, it's a little concerning that they spent one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred fifty million dollars more in this one than the first one. You know, teach their own, but I do think though it's we should not keep go the lesson of like stop spending these massive budget on these movies. As a guy said, who won best uh, adapted screenplay for American Fiction, he goes, "Hey, I get it. You want to spend money on this, on this, on the, all this money on, this, on these movies. However, how about how about spend that money?" And make ten smaller movies. And I was like, yes, yes, absolutely, do that. Take more risk and make more movies. While since spending all this money on one film, take that budget and get that to smaller movies that can be made for whatever streaming, you know, theatrical, whatever. Um, I I think they were a little too over their heads with the budget for this movie. I'll be honest. Um, mm-hmm. And again, I do think it's worth seeing in theaters. Again, you're probably one of the few podcasts that will hear this. Um, and viewers that hear this, I think it's worth seeing in theaters. It is a thousand percent worth seeing in 1.43 70 millimeter IMAX for sure. It's beautifully shot. Yep. Um, but again, if you're not a fan of the first one, you will definitely, you will for sure hate this movie. Probably, if you are the fan of the first one, you could either lean with me and Nick, where like we did like it, we, and we're fans of the first one, or people who I people who I know love the first one hate this one too. It's very divisive. It's very polarizing. But I do think go see it for yourself. Don't let reviews, either our review or what other reviews, see this movie. Definitely see it for yourself. Have your own opinion. And now let's do spoilers. Okay, so the spoiler warning. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, go out, go out and go watch it and come back and listen to this review. So spoilers in five, four, three, oh, two, and one. Okay, Nick. 
spoiler, spoiler territory. What did you think about the ending of how they killed Arthur Fleck? I was a little bit disappointed initially because I wanted to see who the visitor was, and I was like, "Me too." Okay, like I, because I was, I was like, "Oh, it's it's gonna be Bruce Wayne. It's gotta be Bruce Wayne." That's like he's gonna be thought. like, "Hey man, fuck you for killing my parents or something Pah! like that." Yeah, yeah, and and then um, you know, it just it was kind of like. So, like it was, it was kind of like okay, um, I- interesting. I, I, I didn't really. It was I didn't really know what to think about it at first. And then, like in the backward, the the inmate that that killed him, it looks like he's he's cutting a smile into his face and he's he's laughing and shit. So I'm like, okay, I guess he's gonna be the future Joker, like moving forward in the, in in like a hypothetical like third one or whatever. And you know, it just. So it's kind of like, okay, I guess I get it. Like it's like the the man died, but the symbol lives on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. now Joker isn't just a person; yep. Joker is an idea, yep. and I think that's what the um, that's what that animated section of it at the beginning was. Like it was like like yes, I'm kind of in control of, and I created the Joker, but um, it's the idea of like because it was like his shadow. Mm-hmm. It's the idea that I think it's just the the shadow or, or like the the symbol or the 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 idea of the joker rather just got a little bit out of his control and it kind of like fucked up his life more so than he really ever could have imagined i think that's that's what that animated short represented and i think that's kind of that's what the uh the movie was showing because you kept seeing like him like like at at the point where that the one dude got killed because he was supporting him in jail, you could see that Arthur was like, "Oh, oh man, I this is what the Joker does." Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I'm, I I lashed out, but my pain is kind of like spreading, and it's like it's getting people killed, and they don't even they don't even really deserve it like that. That's why he was like, you know, the courtroom, like like I'm the Joker, whatever. He cut he 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 wiped his his, his makeup off, and it mm-hmm. was just like it, it's just me, and like he didn't want anything to do with it anymore. And then when the fucking bomb goes off, and I was I was really happy that Harvey Dent was alluded to to be two to be two face in this movie because like as soon as I heard that his character was gonna be in it, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, Joker's gonna Joker's gonna cause him to become two face. Like I thought I thought that Joker was gonna do something deliberately mm-hmm. to cause it, and it would kind of tie in a, a little bit to how he like you know kind of created Batman, which like it was his actions that led to those events, but. You know, then it's like he he kind of caused it just because he's the Joker and he has like that he has all those followers. But it was like it seemed it was it was more like indirect than direct. So it's kind of like okay, cool. But he's still you know his his like half of his face was all fucked up. So I was like okay, bad. But um, no, excuse me, kind of kind of went off uh kind of no, went off as, but as you, as you should. I um yeah, but like overall, like it was just like I, I like that it was uh, I it was it was an interesting take to me that. He was just like, you know what? The Joker was a bad idea. It's just causing more harm to people, and it's like, you know, I, I don't really want to want to do this anymore. So it's like that. That was that's an interesting take on the Joker to me, because oftentimes when I think about, you know, like hypothetically, like I'm like, mm, if, if I was going to do a Batman movie, blah blah blah. But it's like, I, I they 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 keep using the Joker in all these movies, and it gets to a point where it's like, well, what else can you do with the Joker? Because y- y'all keep like using them and it's like you know it's you you run the the risk of like going still with that character right and like with right. with um with with the Robert Pattinson the Batman movie you know I was like okay you know they they made a dope Batman movie and they didn't have the Joker in it but the the end scene where it was the Joker in the cell I'll admit I was like initially I was like ah not the come on man like we yep you and I both need the joke right now but like when I saw like his his smile was looking all like fucked up I was like okay I'm I'm intrigued I'll admit but you know still like is yeah y'all still kind of were like hey, here's, here's here's some here's here's a little bit of joke and it's like ah come on man like it would have been cool if it was just if it just like, wasn't but like the just how like distorted his face look like that kind of i'll admit like that kind of piqued my interest so i'm okay and then i saw that deleted scene i was like nah this is dope i'm not gonna lie this is fucking dope i need to see this in the movie but um you know overall it's just uh 
Mm. I know what you mean. I mean, shit, yeah, but uh, uh, I'm so sorry. I totally lost my train of thought. No, it's been good. a long day. You're good. You're good. What, what? I- <laughs> No, Michael, where was I going? No, no, you talking about what was I saying? I mean, you talking about how Batman, how you saw at the end of Batman, you saw we saw Barry Keegan as Joker again. You're just like, oh, not this again. You're just like, oh my oh, god. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, I got you. Thank you. So, so go, going back to 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 Fale Adu, and uh, pardon me for mispronouncing it, but this is we oui, we oui. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is merci. But this, this is I, I like it for what it is because it's a very different take on such a well-known character is very, very different take on the Joker. So I, I appreciate it for that as well. I don't necessarily agree with all of the choices that they made with this film, but again, like having seen like the, the direction that they went with it, I'm like, I mean, you know, I've, I've, I fucks with it for what it is. It's cool. You know, I, I never, I certainly never expected them to do that because I really thought th- that part two was going to just follow him but he's going deeper and deeper and deeper into the Joker persona. And, you know, so it was, it was definitely a subversion of that to say the least, but, you know, overall it was kind of like, I mean, shit, it was dope. It was a good movie. And like, I, I know like a lot of people are kind of like, Oh, but the, the, the musical shit, I mean, I, the the way I look at it is like he he just was like using those songs and those musical numbers to escape reality. Yes, and absolutely. but while at the same time also processing like what was going on around around him and how he felt about it. So it it didn't really bother me because I was like, well, that's just kind of because also this movie is from his perspective, so that's just like him kind of like e- escaping from reality for a little bit, and then it you know it ties into when he saw Harley at the end or Lee at the end, excuse me. Cause her whole thing was, you know, I, I saw the Joker and it just like inspired me. Like, she's like, you know, I want to do what you do. I want to just kind of like escape into a fantasy land and do whatever the fuck. Cause she was in them songs with him too. You feel me? So like at the end, he's like, Hey, just, just talk to me. That's like, that's like real life communication. Like just, just talk to me, be real with me. But she's, she's singing at him. Like she wasn't just like singing to him. She was singing at him. Like, and it was like, it was like her way of saying, like, I'm choosing to live in the fantasy that you've abandoned because she's like, you're not the Joker anymore, so I can't fuck with you. I'm going to just stay in this fantasy. And 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 then it was like that. That was the last that we even saw of her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's like, dang, that's that's kind of crazy, too. Like, and again, like, they handled that character very differently, very differently, mm-hmm. at least at least towards the end, like like gearing up. It was like, OK, you know, it, she she seemed kind of like she seemed a little bit more like how she was in the comics, where she's a little bit like kind of kind of like out there and she's just kind of like kind of like doing whatever and she's like you know like being very supportive of him and everything like that but um it was interesting that it was like well no she's not even she doesn't even really need to be in this asylum she just checked herself in she doesn't she actually she 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 never lost her parents she lives with the parents and she's like she's rich and it was like oh so she's really just kind of like this like ultimate like like kind of like yeah basically and it's like yeah. that's that's a really interesting take and that in a way that that is kind of like true to like her more original depictions in the animated series and the comics because she was staying with the joker like no matter what no matter what he did to her and this one he wasn't even like abusing or anything like that like how the original joker was this one was like you know it was it was basically a love story he's like i finally found someone that understands me mm-hmm. you know so it was just kind of like so for her to like, and she was, she was like, lead, no, I don't want to say like leading, leading him on, but like, she kept like, just like making oh, up like all these, like, she, she, was, she was yeah, playing, cause it she was, was like, she, with she's like, yeah, she's like, she's like, I'm, I'm pregnant. I'm like, you're not pregnant. One pump. Like, it, I, cause <laughs> I feel like that was just, cause I think he even like brought it up again at the end and she just kind of like ignored it. I'm like, yeah, you, you were never pregnant. You were just saying that to try to like, to try to manipulate him. And it, it, it clearly worked. I don't know if anyone. She clearly wasn't pregnant to begin with. It was just like she's like, I know, I know what to say to him to kind of like manipulate him and, and like push him into this this Joker persona. Because as soon as she said that, he forgot all about what he was upset with her about. Yeah. It, did you notice that? So it's kind of like you know she, she knows how to like push his buttons. I did, and I read this thing on so, so I read this thing on Twitter. I want your thoughts on this. This was some girl I saw on Twitter. Some th- her theory. 
She thinks that Lee committed suicide when she held a gun to her head, to her head, and her on the stairs was just Arthur's imag- imagination. Because she said, this girl on Twitter said that at one point he looks up, and she wasn't even there. Oh my god! And that's a theory. Again, this, this is a theory. It's not confirmed. Anything. This is a theory. This is a theory. That would be crazy if that was a theory. That would be, that would be crazy. insane. So be when, when he when he saw her at the beginning of the movie. When they were like, when they were like at, right by that music class, and she she mimed like shooting herself. She's saying, "Oh no 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 no!" Remember that scene where she's she's remember she's at the apartment, that fucking boo boo ass apartment, and there's a scene where she has an like, actual gun to her head. Oh, when and, she's when she's looking in the mirror. Yes, and like oh. you see her pull the tr- you see her I slowly pull slowly start to pull the trigger, and then it cuts back to the courtroom. So this girl was saying that she. This girl thinks that she actually killed herself and that he's just seeing her in her mind. He, 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 he Yeah, so at the end, we're on the stairs with her little short hair, her little more Harley Quinn, I guess, more outfit, whatever, where mm-hmm. she, this girl on Twitter thought that, like, it was just his imagination seeing her on the steps where she was like, what a baby? And she was like, goodbye, Arthur. So Jeez. she thinks it's all bullshit. I mean, it could because, as we all know, he was he was bullshitting about Zazie Beetz's character. Yeah, we are shitting on that. Yeah, we I don't got, know how we Google. fell for it. Todd Phillips is low key a cinematic <laughs> genius because I watch the movie we're like, what the? F- we what got fight, we got fight clubbed <laughs> Dude, for real, bro? I was like, oh my god. So then, like, when it was like he was just imagining, I was like, oh, okay. I was like, that's the only way it could have been going down, right? So, I'm like, that's the only explanation for it. That. I, I'd, be, I'd be crazy theory that also happened with Lee. I don't know. That, uh, that would Harley, be so yeah. fucking... Oh, that would be so sad. That's so sad. And also, I'm going to be real too. We, You and I both were like, oh, right? During that, that was an uncomfortable ass sex scene and uncalled for. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was so like... It was cringe. It was... It was but I'll admit, I feel like that was the point because it was... <laughs> it was very just kind of like just like awkward and just like again like how you said like uncomfortable because it was but it's like I feel like that was kind of like the point because not, not to get all nasty about it but I, I think that this might have been like his first experience with yeah, that so it too. would just be and like you know plus he was like he looked like he weighed like 10 pounds if he walked outside on a windy day he would fly off into the sky like he was like skinny so it's kind of like I guess it was just like his body was also just kind of like just like weak and like moved around awkward Mm-hmm. Cause he was just looking like just yeah. ACA, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it was kind of like, love. <laughs> and again, like she she knows how to like push his buttons and manipulate him into into like being like the Joker. So she's like, you know, she like she literally thought the film she was trying to like seduce him, but into that that Joker persona. So it's like, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, so but no, I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm 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 happy it was a quick scene. Yeah, because it was kind of like I was like, oh my god, <laughs> someone. Not to not to be this guy, but like someone brought their baby to this movie. Oh yeah, I was like, bro, what? N- you, now you gonna you gonna psychologically mess with the baby? You gonna be scared of clowns for some reason? And it was so funny because I turned to the right next to you and I was like, is that a stroller? And you were like, oh shit, it is. And yeah, I'm like, I, I, I kept noticing it like throughout the film, and it was like, I was like, I know because it, it was a stroller, but no one was sitting next to it. So I'm like, is it just an empty stroller or is there a baby in that stroller? This is some haunted like movie theater. <laughs> man- Engine type shit, bro. Because I was like, I hope that it don't just start like rolling over oh, towards me by itself, right? bro. I'm gonna fucking didn't hop it, out the theater. Then it, then it. It's like, hey, 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 back up, back up, get on, uh, go, um, go, go on somewhere, get, 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 yeah. get, um, get out of here. What, what do you say, in Greg Gatsby? Get out of here. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the Hangover with Rob Riggle when they break into that uh, apartment. The first Hangover, he goes. Shut that baby up! Shut that baby up! Shut that baby up! <laughs> <laughs> also, also, oh Todd, also another Todd Phillips movie. Um, no, you I know, that, I feel like that's the best one. It's all in the trilogy by, by far. By yeah, that, far. The, the first one is the best one. The second one is is like a good it's a, it's a guilty time, pleasure. I guess. The third one, the the third one is like it's it's fine. Like it's it's funny, but then it gets like really sentimental, like right at the end. And it's like this kind of came out of nowhere, but it also like makes sense. Right. I know what you mean. Because it's like mean. it's the end of the of the trilogy, but um, but yeah. I know I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean exactly. And uh so I'm with you and a lot of things. Again, I I really I, mean, I think you and I are both on the same page with this movie. I think with this movie, and again, I don't want to be one of those guys like do understand it, but the more I thought about it over the weekend, 
and the more I saw more TikToks and the more I saw about, you know, on on you know on Reddit or something like that, whatever, the movie itself is kind of like a response to the first one because the first one came out and people were like, oh my gosh, yes, he killed five, he killed six people. Yes, yes. I wanted to see that. No, no, that, that's exactly what it is because that, that's what um, Todd Phillips said was yes. the point of this film. Yes. It was it was a direct response to that. So I was like, when I heard about that, I was like, that's that's kind of interesting. Huh? I wonder I wonder what he's going to do. And it really was just like, no, th- this, this wasn't something to be celebrated. I'm hurting people. Like even with what yes. was what, his name? Like like Greg Puddles, when, when yes. he came in, like he was like he was like oh dude, like I, I can't sleep anymore. I can't go to work. It's like yeah, yeah. You really kind of just like fucked up. And like in the scene, like he's kind of he's not not being like dismissive of of how Puddles like felt, but he was just kind of like casually like yeah, okay, I guess I'll like, see you later. But it's like bro, you just murdered someone in front of someone else. Yes. And like you know, Literally. and he's like, he's like, I'm, I'm scared all of the time. Like that's, that's a traumatic experience. And like, it was just like because you know you got to have a cathartic experience. You, you, you kind of think that's it, but you're not, you're not worried about how your shit affects the rest of us. Exactly. Yeah, consequences. And he's like, you know, I'm scared. Like Zazzy Beats was like, I was scared. This man broke into my house, and like, my daughter was in there, bro. Like his, his mom said that he was crazy. Like he based his life on a lie and so shit like that. I, I couldn't believe that she was like going like that deep into it. She really I was. was. Like, I was like, yo, but like low key at the same time, it's like, yeah, man, you, you you put my family in danger. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm putting all your shit out there. And then I, I forget like who else. Oh yeah, the 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 it was it was the other psychiatrist. Well, no, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, no, yeah. The, like it was like it was like, every, run, yeah. you 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 got to see like just like how like far like you you just like fucked up people's lives and it's like oh man like i didn't really think about that so it's kind of like you had to come to terms with that and then it, it's ironic the 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 joke at the end how it's it, you know the, the punchline was you, you get what you deserve because you know it parallels when he killed Murray, as he pronounced it in the 2019 film and you know it's like you know arthur get, gets killed because it's like you know you took lives so in a way in order for you to like repay that debt you have to have your life taken or whatever but also you know again it ties into the whole Joker isn't a person, it's an idea movement or I, an idea concept because he was essentially this guy became the next Joker. And even with this guy, the, it ties in further to the whole like, Joker concept because um, we, um, no one really knows where the Joker came from. And right. we don't know where this guy came from. He just popped up out of nowhere and literally just took up the mantle of the Joker. So it's like, that's kind of crazy. And, you know, it's, that's, um, it's just cool. So it's like it, it it did the Joker thing very differently, but it was still kind of paying homage to like certain aspects of the character overall. You yes, know what I mean? And absolutely. I, and I feel like it 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 did that well because it's like you know I, I like the idea that Joker itself is an idea because also that that makes him that that immortalizes him that's that's really interesting having mm-hmm. said that especially about the the inmate that presumably becomes the next joker um apparently i don't know if this is confirmed but people were saying like that was Todd Phillips paying homage to the to the Heath Ledger Joker from okay. the Nolan films i am so glad you brought that up i'm so I, yeah, what, that what, what do you what do you think about that because okay. some people were saying like at, at, originally nolan was like i don't want you guys i don't want any like any references to yes to, to the heath ledger dark knight shut it like, down like you gotta shut admit, it down yep. I, I don't know if i don't know if oh yeah because i and because um nolan isn't at, at warner brothers anymore he's he's nope. with universal, universal. Mm-hmm. like todd phillips supposedly based on what i heard was like well he's not here anymore so now Fuck we you. can we can yeah exactly so now now we can we can make reference to to his version of the joker so it's like that that part uh like seems a little bit like scummy yes if that is what he was doing if it is like you're not here so now i can i can make it the heath ledger joker it's like okay mm-hmm. but like why though why not just legit commit to doing your own thing right you know what i mean right. so it's like like if 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 it was kind of done out of like a little bit of disrespect and you know well now he's gone so I can do like whatever it's like that's that's just kind of weird to do I yeah think. I agree I but agree if it was if it was a situation where it's like no this is just me kind of like painting this idea that that Joker is 
is more of a concept and more of an idea than an actual person. And one way to kind of like viscerally do that would be would be to show someone just murdering the Joker, just coming up out of the blue and murdering the Joker, and then then cutting his own face into a smile, and then just kind of becoming the next Joker, even though like he probably doesn't even understand what the original Arthur Fleck Joker was trying to do. Like he probably doesn't even understand like like why specifically like his his philosophy mm-hmm. behind the mantle of the Joker. He probably just saw that oh he he dressed up as a clown and killed people. That's what I'm gonna do. You know I, what I mean? So it's kind of I'm like, with you on that. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's, it's like the the idea lives on even even if like the 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 man changes. But it's like that's gonna that's kind of interesting because again like the the idea the persona lives on, but it's always gonna be just it's never gonna be exactly the same as the first one. I agree. It's always going to change and evolve with with each person because it's, it's also going to be like again the telephone. It starts off like, I like this that. On, on this side, and then as as it goes on, you feel me? Then it's it's something completely different by the end of it. I'm so with you on the telephone, bro. Again, chef's again, chef's kiss. The tel the telephone example is perfect for that. And I'm I'm with you. I have people were saying, oh, it's Heath Ledger Joker. I'm like that wouldn't make sense because Harvey Dent guy's face already blown up in this one. So. It, it just, yeah, so it, so it to, to that aspect, it's like hopefully it's that's not what Todd Phillips was trying to say. Like, I really I hope he's, so. he's not saying like, "Oh, this is the Heath Ledger one." Oh God, I would I really be hope like, not. Uh, "That's kind of yeah." I'd be like, "If that's the case, how come no one ever brought up the Joker in it, you know in, in the exactly. Nolan one?" Exactly. And it's like you know, just just really do your own thing because that's that's what we're here to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we wanted to see the Heath Ledger Dark Knight, we would have put in, uh, we would have put that movie in. Exactly, it would make more sense. Heath Ledger Joker, pardon me. We would have put the Dark Knight in the DVD player, but like with this one, it's like no, we want to see the Todd Phillips Joker. It, it, it's, I think, I think what this movie did, especially, I think a lot of people, and it's fine. I think we do. We all do this. People walked into this movie with their own expectations, and when mm-hmm. the movie did not hit that, they're like, "Man, fuck this movie." I'm not saying you, you can't have your own expectations, but I think people are mad that it wasn't the movie they wanted to be. They wanted to see yep. Joker unhinged and start like pa 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 pa, like capping motherfuckers and just kind of just like yeah, just, and just, just like going just, off in the streets, just, just straight up this just, just like stabbing this you know murking everybody. But yeah. the movie is about Arthur. The movie is more about Arthur and about a, a man who was very mentally ill. And again, that movie, even the even the his his attorney, Kevin Keener, said this is all they only care about. They don't care about you. They care about Joker. They don't care about you. And the movie's very meta because once he goes, there was no Joker, his fans, including Harley, left the courtroom. And I think in this movie, people were like, what the fuck? Like, I wanted this movie. This was what I wanted. And they left angry. I think a lot of people did not. People were people wanted to see a movie of Joker just going, just fucking murking people straight up. Just kind of just, just like, again, just killing people left and right. So they didn't get the movie that they wanted. And again, and I'm not sure that guy, like, you don't understand it. But the more I'm reading about it, the more I'm hearing about it, I was like, oh, okay. It's a cautionary tale. But it's, again, you, were, you guys were glorifying. You were rooting for a, a killer in the first one. And you wanted to see him. You, you didn't want to see him get better. You wanted to see him. Yeah, you wanted to see more of that, more of that criminal activity. Ex- exactly. And I think a lot of the times, as, you, as, we, all, as we all know, we do, I think, and now playing TV and television and film, we do glorify murderers. Again, look at Dahmer. Look at, you know, the, a lot of Ryan Murphy shows. Like, we, uh, the Ted Bundy sh- movie, whatever. Like, yeah, we well, do. What's that, that, that new one with the, with the brothers and, um, oh, the, Men- yeah, the, Menendez, the, the Menendez brothers. Yeah. Ryan Murphy did that show. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yep. I keep seeing, um, I keep like hearing about it on like TikTok. Like, not like my TikTok, but, you know, but it's like, like, I, it, it keeps like coming up and I'm like, this shit is insane, bro. I, I don't think I could watch the Dahmer one because I that me ate his ate his victim. So ugh, no, I could anything yeah, with cannibalism. I mean, I, I'm out. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> I'd, I'd I'd watch the OJ Simpson one. That was good. That was really good. I because I, I I started that in college, but I never I never got a chance to like finish it. That was but, good. Um, that was really good. And I the, there's a new one came out last week with like the football player like Aaron Hernandez. Um, oh, the, the the dude from um uh, uh, Hunger Games. Yes, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Snakes. Yep, that guy. Yep, who was dating Rachel Z- Ziegler. Yep, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's it. That's he's he's in that one. So 
so it's back to your point, though. Absolutely. It's it's just Todd Phillips knowing what he was doing. Because again, I think also good. I haven't read Dune Messiah, but I think Dune Messiah was made and reaction because people were rooting for Paul Atreides. And that's where, right. Where do where Paul where Paul uh Frank Herbert was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand what I'm talking about. You should be afraid of this guy. No, no roof yeah. for him. You should be afraid of this guy. And you kind of see in Dune Part 2, spoilers for Dune Part 2, sorry, it's been, been a couple of months. But you see Paul turn into like this like power hungry. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like Anakin Skywalker, but like Exactly, not, Nick. In my exactly. opinion, it's like, it's like soft, but it's it's like wh- where you think he's going to, you know, he's, he's going to save everybody. Then he takes his dark turn, like seemingly out of nowhere and just fucking turns and becomes like the most like fear, like evil character, like in Fucked the, up. Yeah. Yeah. Exa- in, in, in the galaxy, in the universe, whatever, just like, bro, like you're how you just said, you, you're fucking everything up, man. Like this is insane, bro. I'm not going to spoil it for you. Cause I know you said you want to wait till you see the movie, but I'm, um, I, I've been like looking into the into the books and everything like that, and like listening to like like podcasts about them and stuff like that. And I know it's like lazy. It's like, bro, just read the book. Um, no, but it was um, a, this guy was like breaking down like what, like I, I'm I'm not gonna spoil it. I promise you. But it's like there, there's certain events that are just like it's just so insane to just to like think about and like. Like it's everything happens on such a large scale and the scale like just hearing about it is insane so it's like holy like i can't wait to 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 see doom messiah to your point i can't wait like, man i can't wait i i cannot oh, wait for doom messiah oh my gosh i can't wait Dude, the, what happens in the books like it is insane man it is crazy you know that we're getting we're getting in 2026 sorry off topic 2026 we're getting a new denny film a new Nolan film and a new Jordan mm. Peele movie and a new mm. Spielberg movie all in the same year. That's crazy. That. I'm looking cr- forward to that. That's crazy, dude. That's cinema. Crazy. Cinema. Um, <laughs> Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, oh, uh, no, I mean, that for that year, we're going to need all the Gatorade and electrolytes for that movie, those movies. Oh, for God. Oh. That's, that's going to be a good year. Oh, I cannot wait that's gonna um, be a good year i can feel it um but i i think i do think that i i do yeah i do i do appreciate i think you know i both appreciate what Todd phillips was doing this one because again i think it just it just subverted expectations and subverted what we thought was gonna be and yes yeah. there was a point where i kind of wanted to see him you know especially get uh, brendan gleason's character for all the shit he, he that he put him through and again oh yeah like like every, every single time like like doug and i were like oh he's gonna be the first one to die yeah, yeah, we're yeah like, especially when he like fucking like just fucking power slapped the back of his fucking head and, bro, right. oh my we my felt God. that we were like shit bro, i was like, when he slapped the back like bro i i heard the skull crack in my chair shook a little bit i said oh shit yeah, we're like fucking okay, earthquake. You know what's crazy? S- slightly off topic, my bad. But um, of course, after after the 2019 Joker film, apparently DC wanted Todd Phillips to run, or like Warner Brothers wanted Todd wanted Todd Phillips to run the DC movies. Hmm. They wanted him to like essentially be the Kevin Feige. Interesting, because remember they wanted David Ayer the same thing in was... 2016 too for their Suicide Squad. Mm-hmm. What the hell were they doing, bro? Literally, they they should have they should have just had Zack Snyder do like his thing. Not to get on this whole soapbox, but like Zack, because he basically was like, okay, I'm I'm gonna direct like the Superman movies and that that lead into Justice League, and then like from there it's gonna spin off from these characters. So it's like he really was kind of like the unofficial like Kevin Feige because it was like I'm building a universe off of like my own vision, but then like that didn't work out, and then it's like because I didn't know about David Ayer until you just said it, so I'm like. Okay, so they just kept fucking trying to switch because it was like mm-hmm. David Ayer, um, uh, and then you know like Todd Phillips, and you know they only wanted Todd Phillips because Joker was because Joker made a billion dollars, not even yep. necessarily because like oh, he knows how to like craft a full universe, and even heck, like this, uh, not that DC wanted this, but like you know Dwayne Johnson was trying to take over the DC universe. Oh, we, we oh, he he made a play out of everyone. He, he I mean he Dude. made a play. Because I know something play. was weird. Because Loki, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, I'm, I'm, be, I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be 98 plus two with you. <laughs> I, I don't know how successful or how good in quality the, the, the rocks DC universe would have been, but I would have been all the way there for it. Because, like, 
he, he brought back Henry Cavill, man. I'm like, that is insane. That's something I never thought would happen. Now, obviously, it was short lived, but at the time, bro, it was like, um, it was it was just like he did it. He has my vote. He what's gave the, me what I want. He brought back Man of Steel, Henry Cavill. Hell yeah. What What's the line from uh, uh, Jurassic Park? You created some of a bitch. You did it. <laughs> yeah. You created some of a bitch. You did it. That's real. But it's like, you know, and so it's like, like, it would be kind of like, because also I, I like the Black Adam movie. I'm going to be I'm gonna be honest yeah, you. Yeah, you and I both did. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's just kind of like, okay, we, we could tell that it got kind of like cut down and there was some studio interference or whatever, but. Um, but it, it, was, was it was good timing. for what it was. It, it was, was bad, bad timing, timing, yeah. But it's like he would have been um it the, the movies definitely would have been like fun, but it's kind of like he was trying to like because I knew something was up when he started saying the hierarchy of the DC universe is about to change. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, my guy? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Like don't because I was like, don't make like Black Adam, he's a cool character in the comics, but don't he's he should not be the center of the DC cinematic universe. That just wouldn't even make any sense. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, don't, don't do that. But then, like, after seeing the movie, and and then like, oh well, he brought back Henry Cavill. It's like, okay, well, it, so he's not really like the center. It's like I, I got to bring back Henry Cavill because otherwise this wouldn't make sense. You know, I got to bring back Superman. So it's like, okay, doing it like that, that makes more sense, and I, I can I can roll with that because you know, again, like everything Loki was dope in, um, at least most things were dope in, in Black Adam. Like they didn't really they didn't pull any punches. And that's one of the things I liked about it. But I um, it was like, you know, Dwayne Johnson kind of like recognized, like, I we, we really need Superman to pull this off. And like low key, like in a cinematic universe, I, I could see that because, you know, Black Adam is, he's a very powerful character, but it's like, he doesn't give a fuck. So it's like, we, we really, really need to like, like rein this guy in. And that's where Superman comes in. And you know, like Black Adam can go fucking toe to toe with Superman. So seeing that in the movies and just seeing an expansion of that, and also like the rest of the DC characters expanding this cinematic universe, that would have been really, really cool. And I think you know Dwayne Johnson would have gave would have given the fans like what they wanted, but oh for sure. At the same time, it's like maybe at there would be a certain point where it's like it just kind of feels like each movie is fan service, and then it's like, are you telling good stories if you keep doing that? Right. That, good point. Like, Very, I don't know necessarily that it would have gone there, but I'm kind of like, now that I think about it, I'm like, dang, Loki. Because, again, like, I think we were talking about it earlier, you know, like, some of the Dwayne Johnson movies, it's like, he's not really challenge, challenging himself as an actor. It's like, I'm no. just kind of trying to, like, please everybody. And I'm I'm doing, you know, all these the Moana the bag. movies and all these, like, crazy, you know, he's chasing the bag. Mm -hmm. But with, um, you know, Batista, like, he, he was he's doing all these like different types of roles and he's, you know, proving himself as an actor. M. Night Shyamalan didn't even know, you mm -hmm. know, but, um, all that is to say is like, yeah, DC is kind of like, they, 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 they kept hopping from like director to, or not director to director, but it's like DC, Warner Brothers and DC is trying so hard to fucking copy Marvel that it's like, you know, Hey, just, just pick a direction that you want to go in and just follow that. Like, just do your own thing. And that's why everything's so like, so, so mixed up. And oh, it's I ironic agree. now. Cause now that everyone's like, no, I don't fuck with Todd Phillips after Joker. <laughs> I <too>. know, dude. <laughs> it's like, bro, because also I'm like, it's it's not even it's not even that bad. Like it was just kind of like, yeah, it wasn't as good as the first one, but it's like it's, it was it's like it's the equivalent of when you know when they made all those 2D animated Disney movies, right? And then the straight to DVD sequels, where it's like, yeah, this was kind of it was weak in comparison, but it's not like a terrible film. But people are acting like. This shit is atrocious. This is terrible, and it's like it's 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 not a bad movie. It's just y'all wanted to see him kind of further into the whole like Joker thing, but that's not right. what the movie is about. You need to look at what is this movie trying to say, and is it saying it well? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But people are focused Preach. on yeah. People are focused on no. Nah, I wanted him to to be more Jokerish. Nah, but mm. you you missing the point of the story that's that's <laughs> being told right now. You just. You know that that's just, that's just saying like because I'm gonna I'm use this as an example when BVS came out you know and and the Ben Affleck Batman was like you know doing like X Y Z and like he was killing people and just people wasn't feeling it it was always like well I don't like that you know I don't like that Batman does that because my Batman doesn't do that yeah but you, you missed the point of what he's trying to say like he's he's killing people in this movie because he just doesn't care anymore mm -hmm. he doesn't see the point in trying to like necessarily be a hero and he's just 
he's apathetic and he's real nihilistic right now. And then, you know, he meets Superman, he gets more hopeful and blah, blah, blah. Now he's a, he's a brighter version of Batman. And it's like, that's that's the point. Like, it's, it's part of the character's arc. It's not just doing it because... Cause, cause, fuck it. It's doing it because <laughs> this, this is the part. This, this is the specific story I'm trying to tell, you know. And so, like with 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 the Joker, it's like, you know, well, this isn't my Joker because my Joker would do X Y Z. And yeah, but th- this ain't your Joker. And mm-hmm. this again, yes, th- that's not yes. the story that's that's being told right now. Tell him, Nick. Tell him, Nick. Yeah. Tell I'm him. sorry. I'm just no. I'm just, tell him. Tell you. Tell him, Nick. It's, it's it's been a long day. I'm just a little tired. I don't know. Where that came from? No, I'm just, I'm just no. speaking my mind. Hey, no, no, don't, do not, do not apologize. Hey, man, this is your, hey, man, this is your podcast. No, I'm just, you tell I'm him. Just teasing. You tell him. You tell him. Well, no, but real talk. It's kind of like it's like it just, it, I just, it, it feels like movies kind of get unnecessary hate sometimes. And I, 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 I get it. More. Not every movie is perfect. There, there is no perfect movie. Like not, not really. But it's like, it's just so kind of like, why is, if 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 you dislike a movie or if you like disagree about a movie, then it's like it becomes like a verbal just like fucking fight it's, it becomes like right. it's all this like animosity and it's like hey cuz one it's okay to disagree mm-hmm. and also it's like again you, you just it, i don't i guess i it, it just kind of irks me when it's like you, you're missing the point of the film and you're not even trying to understand what it what it's tr- trying to say mm-hmm. you just kind of caught up in this is what i wanted to see okay but that, that's not what they made though that that's not the story that they told, and you're it, mad because it's not based on what you on, wanted. You're mad because you're not seeing like, your expectations on on the screen, which is like, I, I get being like, okay, I kind of expected it to go this way, but it went this way. But you know, again, it's like you, you still got to accept it for what it is. Mm-hmm. You can't see so all about guns get... and butters. <laughs> you can't always get what you want, and I think. Yeah. I I think well I'm so glad you brought up BVS too because I was very surprised they did this. So as, as we all know, BVS was not did not they never did, so as we all for most movies, most big budget movies like this, they always have test screenings for these movies. BVS was not tested at all, so they were no, like audiences, but I think with the executives because um, right sorry I was, sorry, I was right, that it, right. it was getting like standing ovations and the, right. you know at one point like before it was like released at one point. On IMDb, it was a nine point seven out. I remember of 10. that. I remember I that. Shit you not. I remember I've that. never seen a score that. so fucking high on IMDb before. That was insane. I remember that. I, remember I was that. like, "Yo, this movie." It, what? What? Did, you remember what Hancock said at at the end of Hancock? Where he was he was talking to Jason Bateman, and he was like, "You're gonna change the, the world." world. <laughs> bro, I was like, I was like a Superman Batman movie. That's a nine point seven out of ten, bro. Oh, oh my I, god! I almost thought you were gonna say when he says to Mike Epps, when Mike Epps goes, "Let's make it happen, asshole." Oh, that would have been fucking better. Damn. Um, no, I, but I, no, that, that's, that's kind of real because I was, I was like, hell yeah, I'm trying to see that man, and it was, it's just like, I'm like, with, with that movie, it's like, like y'all are so caught up in. This is how I want to see him represented. That you're not under, you're not understanding. Really thinking of, you're not understanding or appreciating. Yeah, appreciating or, is different. It, you're not appreciating. This is again what it's trying to say. Mm-hmm. I, I said that a thousand times now, but it's, it's like, you know, it's like y'all are just kind of like looking at it wrong. That, that's mm-hmm. just my opinion, I guess. Mm-hmm. No, I do. I'm with. I'm it's with like you. You're, you're you're missing the point. I, um, honestly, and. Can I, and I, so why why I brought why I brought up BVS because apparently they they never tested Joker two at all they didn't Joker, they didn't test this Joker whatsoever hmm. and I, you would think with a, with a budget with this movie that high they was never tested and apparently since the movie made a billion the first one, the first one made a billion dollars they gave Todd Phillips you know carte blanche like go crazy like do whatever so he had no restrictions he had no like don't do this don't do that whatever and apparently like. James Gunn gave notes and tell Tal- Tal- was like, "Fuck you! Like you, mm. you're not my dad. You know, you're, not, you're, not, you're not my boss. You're not, you're not my boss. Whatever." So you know it's crazy. They did the same thing with with Patty Jenkins in the Wonder Woman movie. That's right. That's right. That's right. But for was, the second one, they said, "Hey, hey, do you do whatever you want?" And, and the then, second one was old, was um for the most part seen as disappointing to say the least. Yeah. So they never te- they never tested this movie and. I, what you said too, Nick, I really like what you said, especially is that 
you know, I'm seeing a lot of people, including including us, as we, again, we so we put our reaction out last week, and granted, that was I mean, we did we did a lot more views on Instagram and TikTok than we did on YouTube, but the first comment I saw on Sunday, and now it's gone, was like shills. How much do they pay you to say this review? And I, I laughed. I was like, that's kind of funny. And I said, let's be real. If we have paid to do this, paid to do this. Trust me, we would be, we would, <laughs> trust me, you would know. There would be signs. There would be signs. But we. Yeah, to whoever left that comment, thanks for the views, by the way. Yeah, they, hey, guess what? You, you, you still watch. And, and the same guy last year was not actually a believer. You, and the guy was like, wow, I would never trust your opinions. Go kill yourselves. Hey, you still watch it, motherfucker. You still watch yeah. it. You still watch hey, it. <laughs> hey, man. Keep it coming. Keep it coming, man. Keep watching our shit, man. Please. Thank, thank you. So I. And I said at the beginning of the episode, me and Nick really strive to we give really authentic, genuine reviews. We're not doing we, it for we cloud. Just, we just give our honest opinions. Yes, we're, we're not. We're not. We're not. Give, we're, we're, we're 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 giving. We're doing it for honesty because we, we love movies. We we're, we see again. We love things that you might hate. We, we, we might hate things that you guys love, and it's and that's the beauty of film. But I do think that what I'm seeing a lot this past week was that people who do love this movie, and this is why I can't stand. You're wrong. You're wrong. Here's why. And you and I both knew people like that in college. It drove us insane where it was like, oh, here's yeah. why you're wrong. It's like, no, 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 no. You can hate a movie that we like and vice versa. We don't want to hear your reason. You're not, you're, don't sell us why you hate the, why, why we hate this movie because you hate this movie. And I think a lot of people, there's a podcast too, a pretty popular podcast. I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with their game. They're pretty, they're pretty big. They're, they have a good name. Called, it's called Raiders of the Lost Podcast, which is a great name if you ask me. Mm. Um, they they re, they reviewed it and they liked it a lot actually, and they said and they they, they had put out a, a statement, bro, on Twitter and YouTube, on Instagram and YouTube. They said, "Never before have we received so much hate for for merely, merely liking a film." Responses about yeah. Joker to have revealed a wor- worrying lack of tolerance for di- for differing opinions, and I think that's really well said. Is that we can have differences of opinions, and that's okay. People don't like this movie, and what me and Nick was saying the whole all night tonight. I think a lot of people went into this movie wanting to see Joaquin Phoenix as Joker, just stab a bunch of people, kill a bunch of people, and when the when people didn't like that, and when it wasn't that what they wanted, people were like, oh, "Fuck this movie." Mm-hmm. You're mad because you made up this own movie in your own head. I'm again. I'm, I'm not saying this movie's perfect. You can hear me and Nick. We like this movie. First one's better. Is it a ten out of ten? Hell no. Is it like top ten of the year? No. But I do think that we're allowed to have our opinions. Again, I'm. I think as the days went on, I thought about it more and more. I was like, I understand what Todd Phillips is getting. I'm not saying you're not understanding that, but I'm saying that I kind of appreciate what you're saying. saying. Yeah, Nick saying it. <laughs> go after him. Oh, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're, we're a team. Go, go after one of us. Go after all of us. No, nah, um, um, <laughs> I wish you would. I wish you would. <laughs> um, so I do think that we are allowed to have different opinions on this, mov- of this movie. This movie is not getting re- well received by critics and fans. But again, you, this is one of the few positive reviews of this movie. Like I said, this movie is very ambiguous. It's ambitious. I do think the musical part definitely was definitely worked. But there was times where I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, I thought the scene, I thought the scene during their TV show kind of thing, like Joker and Harley, it kind of, mm-hmm. again, it was shot really well. I like the end when he, when he gets stabbed at the end, it kind of went back to that when, you know, she shoots him, whatever. I like that, but it kind of just felt like a little a tad out of place. I really did like the one in the courtroom when he when he has the hammer and just hits Harvey Dent and hits the judge or you said fucking uh, Scorsese. <laughs> oh yeah, cuz the the judge looked like Scorsese. Y'all. <laughs> He really did that, and uh, the Six Flags guy. Um, oh, more, yeah, yeah, yeah. more flags, more fun. Um, <laughs> so I, that scene was really fucking cool. It was also all the stuff in the musical se- sequences were shot in seventy millimeter one four three IMX, which is really cool to see that in that format. Um, but I, I do, I think there was times where I think it kind of took away from the film at times, where it was like I kind of want to see what happens next. Um, but it wasn't to a point where I was like, oh my God, get on with it. Also, I'm a, I'm a fan of musicals, so I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Um, so I, I, I did like the musical part. There was times where I was like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, but however, I don't think it was worth like, it's not worth all this hate where it was like, Todd Phillips should never work again in this industry ever again. We're too right. reactionary. We are too reactionary to, the, to these things. When people, when audiences don't like something, it's like, fire him, fire her, fire them. It's like, why? Like, 
just because you again you are like a movie but why are you calling for him to be fired it's like this is so this mob mentality that we live in over a fucking movie like come on like tr i mean <laughs> i mean again it's just it, to me it's just like we were so reactionary to about a movie for for what guys for what fire him fire them never work again it's like these people have families too listen if there were some Harvey Weinstein shit, of course, fire him. You guys are fucking scumbag, sicko, piece of shit. But just because Todd Phillips made a movie that you didn't like or agree with, they should never work in the century ever again? Like, a society, what are we doing here, guys? <laughs> like, I just, like, and again, Snyder got a lot of hate, too, after BVS and Man of Steel, obviously. Fire him. It's like, yep. okay, it's like. And guys, then look what happened. We got happened. the Justice League. Exactly. Congratulations. Happened. You played, you played yourself. yourself. Ex exactly. And you know, also too, I actually did like that the bomb sequence scene in this movie at the end. Because I loved how oh, like yeah. the sound went out, Ray Save it Priving Ryan almost. And then like you you follow him out to the streets or whatever. And I love that shot where like they throw him in the car or whatever, and it's very kind of just like very like it's a very intense shot. It's like right in the back of the car with Arthur. His 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 hearing is still going out, whatever. And you hear like the oh, blah, 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 blah. hey, we blew it up. Blah, 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 blah. I loved how intense that was, and I love the scene where he, where he runs out of the out of the taxi and he keeps running, 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 and they, and they follow him, whatever. And then the cars hit him. I love that scene. I love that scene. Um, that was dumb. That was dumb. Did you like the cartoon at the beginning? Because I did. I really did, um, because I when I was a kid, um, my I would watch like old black and white movies with with my grandma, and so like and those movies would would start off with a little animated short. Yeah, me too. So seeing seeing this, it's like oh that that was cool, but I I thought that it was just gonna be an unrelated. We just made this for the sake of making it type thing, but mm -hmm. it actually tied into the movie because it was yeah. actually like part of the film. Shadow. It yeah. wasn't just like, you know, this is like a little bonus feature or whatever. Like it was part of the film. So, you know, that was cool. And I feel like that was giving context to essentially what was going to, how the film was going to unfold more or less. So I appreciated it for that too. But, um, but no, I, I really liked it. And it was, um, it was also just kind of like just fun to watch too. So that was dope. Yeah, that was a really interesting way to open up the the movie too. And also, you pointed out there's a, there's a shot of De Niro of Mur Murray, <laughs> Murray, Murray. How about a joke, Murray? And there's a shot where like he's in the dressing room. There's a shot of like actual De Niro. There's like blood all over the poster. That was kind of interesting. Um, yeah. And again, I think if you're going in looking for Batman references, there's like one with Wayne Tower. In the far, like, there's a shot where, like, they're driving to the courtroom. You, you, you blink and you miss it. It's, like, in the corner, top corner, and it says, it says Wayne on it. Um, but, again, Todd Phillips doesn't really care about Easter eggs or fucking whatever. Yes, you have Harvey Dent in this movie because, again, it would make sense Harvey Dent is the prosecutor at this time, whatever. Um, the one thing I will say, too, and I heard from another podcast, the Double Toasted, the Double Toasted podcast, is that when they announce his, you know, like, guilty or not, they say the people of New York City... And I said, wait, what? Yeah, because yeah, I, I remember you, you looked over to me and I guess they're saying Gotham City exists in New York or something, but it threw I, me I off. I was like, oh, okay, I guess because <laughs> it is kind of like, it, it was like, like New York-ish anyway, but it, right. it's like, it, it is kind of weird that it's like, I guess why not just say like Gotham City or something? I, I don't know. It threw me off, but I was like, oh, okay, I, I, I guess. Um but also too, I, I definitely I, what the pregnant thing, pregnancy thing was kind of like uh, okay for why, um, and yeah, like I, I, as soon as she said, I was like, nah, that's cap. Yeah, I was like, yeah, she's she's uh, she's learning she's learning you in, she's learning you in, yeah. um, and also and also too, you, I wanted to know who the who the who the uh, uh, the guest was at the end of the movie before he gets stabbed. Um, you know what? I, I heard a theory that... Um, was it Puddles? No, it was... So the uh, Brandon Gleason's character just basically set it up so that... Really? So that Arthur would get killed. So there there never was a a visitor. And he was just like, I know that if I if I set up like this, he's going to get killed. So that that's the theory that I heard. Interesting. But but no, because I was I was like, is it gonna be Bruce? Is it gonna be um is it gonna be Lee? And I I remember like when we were talking about it, 
th- this is kind of not like a theory I have, but it would be interesting if they went this route with it again. Like how th- how the first one ended with uh, one of the shots with Bruce Wayne's parents getting killed. What if this Joker movie is like eight, ten years later or something like that? And Bruce Wayne just kind of like maybe got like like screwed out of his family's money and he just kind of got like lost to like the foster system or something like that and just led like a a more like like you know just had like like a rougher life right and kind of like lost it and then ended up in Arkham Asylum so like what if like that inmate that stabbed him that that, that, that that's what I I thought before he started cutting his face but I was like oh dang what if that's like Bruce like he just like he just went crazy and then he's like, you're the guy that basically caused my parents to get killed and, and fucked up my life, so I'm going like, to kill you. But then when he started, like, scratching his... When, when he started cutting his face, it was like, yeah, probably not. I don't think yeah. it's crazy. But, like, that would be interesting if, like, it's just, like, this is just, like, a a darker, like, more, like, much more hopeless, like, take on it. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I get... I, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought it was Bruce... And someone on tw- someone on Twitter thought it was Puddles, like, oh, he wanted to see how Joker how Arthur was doing, um, but I, I kind of want to believe it was it was Bruce if there was a guest. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I be too because I, I would I would like to see some sort of confrontation. Yeah, between the two, even if it's just a verbal one. Yes, me too. I I would have liked that. So okay, okay. Well, I'll end on this. Do you think? And obviously now we know this is in the this is not the Joker that meets. Uh, Batman Bruce Wayne do you think the Joker that we quote unquote see at the end is the Joker that meets Bruce and Batman in that universe I feel like yes um, okay because I could see it where like he's just kind of doing like you remember in Bike Riders that that little kid that kind of oh, grew yeah. up and like he started his own gang I feel like it's gonna be like that ah, he's good, like I'm gonna just start my own like you feel yeah it's like I'm gonna just start my own crazy ass Joker gang and then by the time like Bruce Wayne Bruce Wayne's Batman shows up because also like by the time like he's Batman this Joker will be like a fully established like mobster fucking villain and he'll probably own like a part of the city so he's so it's already gonna be like you kind of gotta like I'm not just like fighting like a new criminal out here like this this dude has his whole shit set up and on top of that like he actually is clearly just a homicidal maniac Mm -hmm. by the way Joker part two ended he just walked up and killed him and then and then cut his own face and said I'm, I'm gonna just be the Joker now so it's kind of like oh, oh my gosh it's like that that's just kind of like a much more unhinged insane version of the Joker because now mm-hmm. this this guy kind of seems like a Joker without reason like how um ironic how, how Heath Ledger was saying in in the Dark Knight you know just like a dog without a leash like mm-hmm. this dude is like a fucking you know you ever see like them big ass like just scary looking dogs? Oh yeah, totally. Oh totally. And they just look like fucking like grew up in Chicago, just yeah, yeah. damn near demonic. <laughs> like that's like this Joker at the end of part two, but just like released onto the world, like just chaos and carnage. Unhinged. Yeah, bro. I was at the fucking vet the other day. One of the, one of the little dogs, like it was trying to be like friendly, I, friendly, I guess. But that motherfucker was strong, bro. It jumped up on my leg and like pushed me over. And I was like, ah. Like, <laughs> and then I'll fucking top all over, man. And then there's Blue, who just wants to hug you. <laughs> yeah, Blue's um, a big furball. No, he re- he really is. Um, but uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I like I like your like your point right there. I, I do think I do think it's him. I think it's the, that's, 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 that's the Joker that will feed well will meet Bruce and Batman down the road. Um, but like you said too. I I'll, first off, I love the comparison with bike riders. By the way, that was again, dude. That was thank on the you, money thank you, thank on, on the money, my friend. Also, I feel like he kind of looked like looked like that dude. He did, dude. Thank you. I thought the same thing. I'm like, is that the guy from the Bike Riders again? Also, too, Russ Boyan thing. You see the Bike Riders? It's on Peacock. Go watch the Bike Riders. A phenomenal film. That, that movie is fucking fantastic. No one saw but us. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, but also I love what you said about te- the theme of telephone. That maybe it just kind of keeps going, 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 and then one day Bruce and Bruce and Batman will definitely meet uh, Joker. Um, yeah, and it's like because even like if if the Joker kind of like keeps changing up like styles and everything like that because it is different people and what, by the time Bruce Wayne gets there he he's gonna think like this guy's fucking crazy because he keeps doing different shit like every week but it's like right no it's just someone else taking up the mantle bro but also that would that would just tie into the the chaotic persona of the Joker mm-hmm. and then even mm-hmm. in even um um Jeff Johns not too uh, it was a few years ago he wrote this story it's called the the Three Jokers. 
And because like Bruce Wayne had found out that this whole time there's been three different Jokers, but it, like uh, everybody, even the audience, they they thought it was we all just thought it was just the one guy. So like if, if it was kind of you know, and like each Joker was, it was like from a certain era in the Batman comics, and it was saying like each of those like eras was like it was this Joker, and then like these ones were this one, then those ones are that one. So it was like, so it's like, that would be, it just, it makes me think of that, of the three Jokers, where it's like, he he's going to keep coming up against this Joker, but he's going to be like, one, it's going to be like, okay, if, like, hypothetically, if this is like a Batman that kills, right? Like, what if it's, it's like, he he kills the Joker one night, and then a couple months later, the Joker pops back up again, and this kind of, in Batman's head, like, if he, like, if he's, like, not as much of a detective, it could be like, I keep killing this guy, and he keeps coming back to life, so that's just, like, mm-hmm. freaky. Like, maybe he, he might deduce, like, it's got to be like like different people are copycats, but even, like no matter how you how you look at it, like either way, he's always gonna be fighting the Joker, even if it is a different like person. It's the same persona, you know what I mean? So it's like that just that kind of makes it like an ever ending battle, which is which is kind of interesting. Oh, dude, well said, well fucking said. And on that note, my friend, what would you what would you rate? Joker follow a dude because I feel like this movie got a D minus on cinema score, which is now the worst comic book movie cinema score ever. Worse than Madam Web. The fact that it's lower than Madam Web is insane. Madam Web was so much worse than this. I know, and Morbius, and, and Fantastic Four. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. this. This movie was better than all three of those. But um, I would like, but I would I would give this movie a solid. Seven out of ten. So wow, a, a C. Look at us, my friend. You and I are both. I'm giving seven out of ten as well. Look at you and I both are in sync tonight, my guy. Great We're, minds think alike, like, my brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, my boy. Look at that. So you hear from us, folks. One of the probably the few podcasts, few reviews that gives this movie a positive review, both with sevens across the board. But again, I would definitely recommend anyone seeing this. See this in IMAX. Go see it for yourself. Go see it for yourself. Don't let our opinion or anyone's opinion you know, sway you. I think as a beauty of film is that guess what? We have all our own opinions and our own and our own critiques. Is definitely I think it's definitely worth seeing for yourself. So go check it out before people ruin people, people ruin it for you. Mm-hmm. Um, or ruin the experience for you. But yeah, IMAX for sure. All righty, guys. On that note, we usually do our one and ones of the week. We do one show, one film recommendation, but in lieu of Walking Phoenix. And his, and his, I mean, I mean, amazing, amazing filmography. We're gonna do our favorite Walking Phoenix movies instead to end the show. So, Nick, favorite Walking Phoenix movie in your opinion? Hands down, Bo is afraid. Wow, bro, because like wow, this movie it's it's such an uncomfortable watch. <laughs> But it's like it's kind of like supposed to be, you know what I mean? Because it's told through the perspective of some guy that's just scared of everything. But also, okay. like when you look at it, it's like it really does kind of feel like everything is like out to attack him. And then, you know, without spoiler, without spoiling it, by the end of the film, you know, you find out why he feels like that. And it's just the, the seeing like the the journey that he goes on is just so insane. And because also on. Um, who, who directed it? Ari Aster, right? Yeah, your boy Ari Aster. Yep. Yeah, Ari Aster, and like I, um, ever since I seen his his he he did another movie. Was not not um. No, he did a Hereditary. Yep. And then he did Midsummer. Midsummer. And then he did this. So like you know, Hereditary. That was one of the first A twenty four horror movies I'd seen, and it's like. I just I just fell in love with the concept of A24 horror movies because these were the first kind of like not necessarily like non-mainstream horror movies but, but <laughs> they they were like um you know it's like it's it's not just jump scares this is you know they made they would make horror movies that are like you know again they're, they're scary to watch throughout the entire film but it's it's very atmospheric and it's very just like you know subtle yet just deep powerful scares but also like if you take away the horror elements of it it's you know it's a, it's a family drama so it's like it, it it works on multiple levels and then like midsummer like that movie was just scary shit to me cuz it's like 
you know, just everything that was going on in that. And, you know, so it's like, and when it was announced that, oh, he's going to be teaming up with Joaquin Phoenix, I'm like, wow, interesting. And, you know, the more I was learning about Bo is Afraid, like, you know, it's going to be, uh, I didn't really, like, learn anything about it, but, like, I saw the set photos on the home. That's kind of interesting. So there was, it was, like, one night, you know, I had the house to myself, and I was like, I'm about to put on some Bo is Afraid. <laughs> and you know, I I think I, I saw just like 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 one of the trailers like long long ass time ago. So I kind of like forgotten really what it was about. Like I, I so it was like almost like a clean slate, which is how, how I love to go into movies. <laughs> and like I'm watching the movie, and I'm like, this shit is just fucking. This shit is wild. It's like it's it's just so like again like uncomfortable to watch because it's like because of like what the character goes through but then throughout the movie like because also i'm like you know again i have this perception of like if it's a24 and it's like ari aster it's going to be like a a kind of creepy unsettling and disturbing movie because that's pretty much like what he does all the time he does it well and you know like it it, it serves the movies well it's, it's, but it's like you know that that's kind of his style um in my opinion but um when it's like when I'm like watching this movie, like kind of around like the middle, I came to realize like, oh, this is an Ari Aster comedy movie, but it's just in that same kind of like, you know, twisted, uncomfortable style. But it's, it's that, but applied to like a comedy. Cause like Bo is such like a goofy kind of like awkward guy. And like when, when you look at it, like everything that he's like going through in the movie, it's like, not that it's like funny but it's kind of like it's just so bizarre and out of pocket <laughs> but again like uncomfortable i'm not gonna like go into some of the scenes but there was like <laughs> one scene where it was like where she had like the paint i was just like oh what the god fuck is going? like it was just kind of like what the, like it, it was like if someone like watched like the goofy movie and was like what if someone just made this like just a twisted like weird horror movie and it's like, you know, because it's like you got, you know, you got this awkward kind of just goofy character legitimately, but just in these like really crazy out there bananas and bonkers situations. <laughs> and like by, by the end of the movie, like it made that this movie made me feel so uncomfortable because, again, it was just kind of like, uh, like just, just the scenarios and just like how, how the movie unfolded. Um, it just it's the most like in a word like like potent experience you know what I, like it's 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 just such a it was just so surreal and visceral it just it felt like when you're asleep and you had having like a nightmare but it's not really one of those like crazy flashy nightmares it's like it, it's like a regular day in your dream but it's just like everything just feels a little bit off Right. It just, it kind of felt like that. It was just like, like, this is like, it was like, just kind of like, why is everybody acting like this? It felt like that. Like, you ever had like one of those dreams where it's like, why is everybody just acting so fucking Uh, weird today? Totally. Totally. It's like, it just, like, that, that's what the movie was. But it's like, you know, it's, it's an Ari Aster comedy. And it's like, that just as a concept is insane to me. It's, It's really intriguing, but, you know, it was, and in and, and that movie, like, it, it's ambiguous because the way it ends, yeah. the last, like, like 15, 20 minutes is like, so did this happen or did this happen? But what did this mean? And, <laughs> you know, like, how the fuck did, like, all of this happen, like, ultimately? And then there was, like, you know, actually even, like, I said the last, like, 15, 20 minutes. When you look back, like, the last, like, maybe, if you go back, like, maybe, like, five, ten minutes before that, like, there's something happens, something that happens in an attic, I'll say, and I'll leave it at that. And when it happens, it's like, oh my god, what the? F- it's like genuinely, what the hell is going on here? It's just so like, what? What does this mean? And it's but- like weird shit like that. Where it's like, you know, that's where it feels like a dream. Because like, you know, when you're having these dreams, it's like everything is like very recognizable as like this is like, it it, it feels like it's real, but then like something just weird and bizarre will happen, mm-hmm. just out of the blue, and it's like like. I don't know really how to describe it exactly as I saw it in my dream, but it happened like this in my dream. dream. This is the best way I can put it into words. Yeah, fever dream. Yeah. (laughs) It was just a fucking, like, two and a half hour fever dream. The 
the fact that you watch that and talk to me, so I watch Talk to Me. The, you watch both those at the same night. You are a brave soul, my friend. I hope you know that. You you, you win an award for that. So I'll, I'll tell you that much, <laughs> bro. Because like I wasn't even like really thinking about it. It was just like like you know I I, I got the house to myself. I'm just about to like watch some movies, and I, I was I was browsing Paramount Plus. Yeah, and I just like came across. I was, I was like, "Ooh, talk to me!" And, like I put that on. I was like, "Oh goddamn!" And then like I scrolled, like I I literally went <laughs> like one space to the to the right, and I was like, "I was like, goddamn, I need to watch something else." Ooh, Bo's afraid. I want to see that. And then like, I just played that. <laughs> and then it was like nighttime, and I was like, "Damn, I can't believe I just did that the whole fucking day, basically." And now it's like I really have to like I'm tired as hell, but like I gotta watch something funny. I can't go right to sleep after watching Bo's Afraid. Are you kidding me? I see demons a whole night. <laughs> And, in the house by myself after that crazy ass movie. And you, I mean, as you know, you you know, you know my experience with Bo was afraid. You oh yeah. The story. And um, <laughs> what, if, if you want to hear my review, of Bo was afraid. Listen to episode number fourteen, because I went to go see this again. I'll, I don't care. I saw this with my girlfriend at the time, and who, who Z was Z was a is a very big you know horror fan, and she loved Midsummer, loved Hereditary. So I was like, hey, cool, we see this IMAX together. And yeah, something IMAX of all places too, which was a an experience I, that would have been oh, oh been really man cool. that it was that would have been insane bro i feel like my brain would have just evaporated it, it wasn't full imax it wasn't like four one four three like oppenheimer and joker two imax but it was one nine oh so how we saw um spider-man no way home and um, okay that it was like it was dune it was, it was we see movies in IMAX so that that level, like it was Avengers: Infinity War, Endgame, IMAX. So one nine zero. So it was the one nine zero, mm. but w- it wasn't the full one four three, whatever. Um, okay. So, so yeah, I mean that movie, as we all know. Um, but that was the first time where where Z, my girlfriend at the time, she uh, had a reaction. I, I think it was either the food we had before, but I know she was very uncomfortable the entire time. And I was too to agree. I was like, what the fuck is... I think up until the paint scene I was in, but when the paint scene happened, I said, okay, I'm out. I said, okay, I'm, I'm kind of checked out. That, and, dude, that paint scene, I was I like, this... It was like at that moment, I was like, this is... Uh, this is a bit much for me, because I'm like, I just... I don't understand how... Or why it escalated to this point, like because like even even he was like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Like it was like, "Bro," because I'm like, "Lady, like what what, what the fuck?" And yeah, it just it's a trip. As Nick said, it's a, it's a really weird dream of a movie, and you know, it's one of those movies like I I love it for what it is because I'm like I just again like I, I love just how fucking far you took it. Like especially there was like one character that was like I don't remember, like he was like this big scary ass dude. Like he didn't talk, but he was just like a fucking like psycho <laughs> just a psycho and like i was like that's scary as shit but that's like that's like like if you're like watching like a sitcom and it's like I, you know it's like you know, the the main character just kind of like happens across like some crazy ass dude and it's like he's scary but it's like it's more funny but it's like if you take that scenario and, and just make it like as viscerally fucking scary and as like surreal as possible in that kind of twisted airy acid way that's like what almost everything in, in Bo's Afraid like is like almost like all of these scenarios and it's like I just again I just like love how fucking how fucking like far he goes with it because it's like this is like this is fucking insane. It's it's an, it's 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 again I will never watch it again. Um, yeah. and, and and also too so again my I, I would have to watch like several years apart like I I love it and like I everything about it like <laughs> and, and like within like the story that it was trying to tell but like. I couldn't just watch it like every other weekend for oh. fun. Like I would, I would never be like chilling with the boys. Like, hey, you're trying to watch Bo's Afraid? No, I mean the the, the first half hour gives me so much anxiety. I don't want to oh spoil anything, God. but the, the, the thing of the apartment gave me so much anxiety. Where I was like, okay, I was like, oh no, no. I was like, I was like really like I had like really like my anxiety was like on full effect during that. Oh, the first the thing of the apartment. I said, yo, da, 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 okay, okay, okay. And it happened. I was like, oh my god. And I was just like, oh my god. And the dinner. I remember, I remember seeing Z. At the, at the time, she was just like, her body was just so tense. And again, I've never seen anyone in my life had this reaction before, where she had to leave the ba- she had to leave the room because she felt she felt sick. Oh and when the gosh. movie when the when the movie ends with that scene, and then it says directed by Ari Aster, I've never seen someone leave a movie theater that quickly. She goes, "We're fucking going!" And this girl ran. All you saw was dust. I oh, saw it was God, dust. Like, she, no, ran she, dude, she ran out of IMAX. She, she ran out of the IMAX. I'm like, I'm like, damn, where, where's he going? I mean, she ran straight out of the IMAX. And I said, damn. 
And she, I mean, I, I was still in my seat. She fucking, she goes, I'll see you at the car. And she ran out of the theater. Mm. <laughs> and I said, I have never in my life, until this day, that was, that was a year and a half ago, I want to say, I have never seen someone have a reaction to that before. And I remember how much, again, I, she, I mean, she hated that movie so much, but I've never seen someone no, cause that's, react that's to that movie. That's part of the reason why I wanted to see it, because I was, I was talking to you about it, and you, you, you had told me that. Yeah, and I was, I was like, dang, so I, I, I really got to see this movie. Then, like, if it's causing like such reactions like this, because I'm like, what, well, like, because I, you know, I, I got curious as to like, well, why? And I was already interested because, you know, again, I like the area. Oh yeah, 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 sure. Phoenix is a, is, a, is a great actor, and it's a twenty four. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, this is just the perfect combination for me. But it's like, dang, it was, it was like that's so. Like, I was like, I really got to see what what's up, and. You know, I because one of the as soon as the movie was over, like I texted Doug, like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You texted me, you're like, like, you're, yeah, like, you're, like, you're, like I, you're like, I understand. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> you're like, oh, you're like, I, I, see, I, like, I see why Z hated this movie. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, th- like this was like, I, like bro, I, I couldn't imagine seeing this in IMAX, but bro, oh, dude, she. Was like, I, I I think if, I, th- I think IMAX ru- I think I think that ruined IMAX for Z. I'll do that because she was mm-hmm. like I would never see an IMAX movie ever again. And I said like, this was a year and a half ago too. I was like yeah oh, we'll see. That she- movie is fucking wild, bro. No, that I mean the, where, the, where the dude was like stuck at the ceiling. I was like <laughs> oh dude I know the the, the spider. Oh yeah, I was like dude, dude like that like because it's like that's a. Th- that's a terrifying situation, of course. Oh, but dude. like when you're watching it in a movie, it's like this is in like a it's like a dark comedy because in a weird way, it's like no, that's kind of funny because that's just like what a comical situation. But it's like this would only be funny if it was like on TV. Like this is something like you know I can see having like an episode of Friends. Where it's like yeah. some weird guy kind of just like breaks in the house and is like hiding in the ceiling or some shit like that. Like while Chandler's trying to take a bath or something. Oh. Dude, oh that oh, the, whole, the whole apartment thing when he leaves to go out to that store and then oh the door and dude, oh they're all oh. like running after dude, dude I, that, oh. that oh, like I wasn't on the edge of my seat with that I was pushing myself further to the couch because it was just like oh made my skin crawl because it's like I, that's that's gotta be terrifying like I'm scared of all of these people breaking in but it's like oh man I gotta get out oh I'll just oh. I've never felt such fear. That is in a movie before. That is Detroit for you, right there. <laughs> Hell no, I'm staying my ass in Arizona. Yeah, fuck the yeah, fuck, dude. Uh, that's what. Yeah, but hey, props to you. That's your favorite walking movie, man. That's uh, because it's, it's it's the one that sticks out to me the most. Yeah, I, you I feel mean, me? Because I, I haven't sticks seen out for Gladiator. sure. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. I, I haven't seen Gladiator yet. I'm gonna watch it this weekend. Yeah, we Brother should, Bear yeah. was cool, and I, it had the Brother kid Bear. from Bernie Mac, but it was kind of like. It's, it feels like they don't really talk about that movie as much, and I'm like, it, it was dope, dude. Can Phil, 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 Phil Collins, bro, song. Oh my god, bro. I love the Phil Collins Disney song, oh, bro. So bro, Tarzan good. soundtrack, Tarzan, fire. Dude, Brother Bear, Brother Bear, fire. Yeah, what else did? Dude, brother, do? brother oh. bear, man, dude, brother bear, yeah, the, the kid, that's right, the kid. Except I love the Bernie Mac show as a kid, and it was like right, mm. he was. That's right. I was like, oh my gosh, he's in that. Uh, brother bear, man. That's yeah. That's why you don't see. That's the one you don't yeah, see. People don't really talk about it, and it's like I, I, you know, I, I only learned like like a year or so ago, like that, like that was Joaquin Phoenix. Yeah, I, that's I, crazy. And also, I mean, I, I, I love the two, the, the two, the dumbass Moose Brothers as a kid. Uh, they were funny. Yeah, that's one. Funny, He's I, like, I'm over purebred Wolverine. These guys, are, I don't know. Oh, that's fucked. That was, that was, that was Rick Moranis in that movie. Oh my gosh, oh, Rick Moranis wow. is in that. Oh my god, he is. Oh my god! Yeah, wow. And then uh, Michael Clark Duncan is in that as well. Oh yeah. Damn. Let's try Phil Collins, dude. Oh man, Brother Bear. Damn. So for for me, it's a tie. It's a tie. I, as a kid, I remember watching Signs with my parents, and mm-hmm. it just stuck with me so long. I think it's I think it's one of N Knight's really underrated movies, if you ask me. I think Signs really I think interesting. So, I I've think heard that before. I think Signs is like I mean, despite the weird kind of alien look, looks kinda of, kinda of funky, kinda of like kinda of cheesy. Yeah. But just the way he builds suspense and suspense and suspense. And as a kid too, you're like I remember the kiss with my parents, I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I was just like, This is so creepy. Um and I haven't watched it in a while, but I remember as a kid, it just stuck with me. It was just like 
when he has that bat, he hits the alien with the bat, I was just like, oh shit. Um, mm -hmm. It stuck with me a lot. So again, as a kid, Simons was like a big part of like, I'm watching with my parents and I was like, what the fuck? Black from Blockbuster video, actually. All right, shout out to Blockbuster. Um, and that to me is one that again, I kind of want to watch, I haven't watched it in years, but I remember as a kid, it stuck with me so much. But I really do have a soft spot in my heart for me called Inherent Vice. Um, because my boy Sebastian, as, as you know, who you know, uh, he gave me the book when we were in high school, and I read the book, and the book was very groovy, very trippy. It's Paul Thomas Anderson, and I remember watching the movie, and the movie is very convoluted. I will say that, but I just love the vibe of the movie. It's a little confusing. It's definitely confusing, but like has a great cast. It has uh, Josh Brolin, Joaquin Phoenix, um, Owen Wilson. Um, oh, wow. it's a very, it's a really weird psychedelic. Like, I think if you were high or you were stoned or you were drinking, you would love, I think you would love this movie. Uh, the great Michael, Michael Kenneth Williams before he passed away. Uh, Del Toro, but he said Del Toro was in it. Um, it's a, Reese Witherspoon's in it. It's a very, it's a very weird, oh, Martin Short. It's a very weird of a cast Martin of a Short. movie. Yeah. It's a very weird movie. It's a very fucking weird movie. I'll be honest. It's a weird, 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 weird movie. Not weird as like Bo's afraid of weird, but it's very weird, right? Very yeah, man, psychedelic man, like very kind of just like uh, that. Okay, kind of like like stoner hippie a little bit. Yeah, it's just a little convoluted. I will say it's a little confusing, but if you just watch it for the vibes, it's a fun watch. And there's a, there's a scene where Josh Brolin's eating this like chocolate covered banana. Very. <laughs> <laughs> little su little sus, little <laughs> sus, and then but the camera goes to Walking Phoenix, and he's our he's our reaction. We're like, yeah, bro, you, you, it's kind of weird how you eat that banana, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, interesting, interesting. <laughs> but no, just but watch Walking Phoenix's reaction because he's our reaction. We're like, bro, you're kind of weird for that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I did love the book a lot. I think the, I think the book is definitely yeah, definitely better, but the movie I think is really it's very weird, it's very funky, it's very psychedelic. Um, but it's it's a fun time. It's a fun time. So I think I think I, I'll probably oh, it's tough. I because I, I really fucking do love signs, but I do like Joaquin and Inherit Vice. So I'm gonna go with Inherit Vice, but it's a tie between. It's a really close second with Signs. So. Hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go with that because I do. I think I think Science might be my favorite. No, no. I think Unbreakable is my favorite M Night movie, but Science is up there. So as a kid, it like just stuck with me for like so long, where I was like, oh shit. Um, so I'll definitely watch Science because it's been it's it's been a long, long, long time. Or what is uh what does Key and Peel say? Another the, the valet guy sketch. He goes, yeah, man. Uh, racist ass Melly Gibson. Yeah, man, Mel Gibson. Like, <laughs> he goes, yeah, man. Oh man, when he's doing that movie, Lethal Weapon. Yeah, man. I man, I do kind of like racist ass Mel Gibson. <laughs> I'm weak. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's one of M Night's under underrated movies. So I gotta I gotta watch Signs again because it's it's been a, it's been a fat minute. Um, but yeah, guys, let us know in the comment section, both on YouTube or Spotify, Apple. What is your favorite? Uh, Walking Phoenix performance. And if you like Joker 2, like us, let us know. If you didn't like it, let us know too. It's fine. Hey, listen, you can call us shills. We didn't get, we didn't get paid, but we enjoyed the movie. So hey, you know what? <laughs> to each their own. Um, all righty, my friend. Nick, where can our amazing audience find you at home on the socials? So you can find me on YouTube at Donning Vision, capital D as in Donning, capital V as in Vision, and on Instagram at Donning Vision, all lowercase, all one word. And hey, if you want want to follow my personal that's my johnson 98 and you can find me anywhere and everywhere that they have podcasts and you can find me personally on instagram at the young jones you can find me on twitter or x at capri sun capri underscore s-o-n and you can find our show socials on instagram and tiktok and youtube all one word midway avenue productions um Again, a lot of love on TikTok, which is awesome. We're growing that as well. But hey, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. We have a lot more things on the pipeline. So look out for that. And again, our YouTube is still growing. Our Expendables 4 reaction is still growing too, which we'd love to see. So uh, also, again, go to, our, go to our link tree in our Instagram bio. Uh, look at some of our amazing work. Look at Nick's amazing work at short films. Uh, Moses' amazing short film. Also, again, Nick was in a really cool magazine from Essence Magazine this year. Read the article. We are so proud of him. So support our boys um, and support our <laughs> socials, man. <laughs> We of course, of course, man. Of course, man. Hey, anytime to plug you, your amazing article, believe I will. 
I got you, my boy. Easy. You're too kind, my brother, but I appreciate you. Now. That's light work. Of course, man. It's, it's my job as your brother, as one, my, one of my best friends. I got you, I'm, man. I gotta I'm, lift at you the up. End of the day, I'm, I'm just a man trying to do his thing. <laughs> Hey, that's well, all it is. Hey man, aren't we? Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. um, we should be. But thank you all for joining this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed our review of Joker. And again, of course, if you're new to the show, welcome to your first outing with us here at the John of Your Life podcast. Hope to see you guys again real soon next week. Again, sorry again, sorry for the, the two week hiatus. Again, we were seeing Joker last week before I was working, so that's on that's on me. But we'll be back with our regular schedule weekly episodes for you all too. And look out for a newsletter from me this week. Hopefully. Hopefully by Sunday, if not Monday, I'll do an audio newsletter for you all. Keep you up with the update with the show and what's to come, obviously. And again, thank you all. Seriously, thank you all for the support to getting us to South by Southwest, which is huge, guys. Seriously, this is our first festival that we're going to be covering as reviewers of the podcast so, and critics. So thank you all for showing us the love and support. It means the world to us. Um, but again, do come back and see us next week. We'll be here. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube Music, Amazon Music. Of course, a full audio show on our YouTube page. As always, guys, we will see you at the movies.